is a presentation of Sports South. Georgia Southern head coach Tim Stowers hopes that Joe Dupree can energize the Eagle offense. But on defense, there's been no power shortage for the Eagles. Jerry Moore's Mountaineers look to get things rolling, and they will rely on a big play back named Chip Hooks, who can take it all the way. Today, it's Georgia Southern and Appalachian on Sports South. Carolina. Sports South presents Southern Conference football. Today it's the Mountaineers of Appalachian playing host to Georgia Southern. Hi right, again everybody. I'm Kevin Eschenfelder along with Jeff Van Note on an absolutely magnificent fall afternoon. Jeff, let's talk about these two teams. Appalachian comes in with a one in five record. You never know what to expect from a one in five team. And Georgia Southern on the other hand comes in playing good football right now. Let's first talk about Georgia Southern and when we talk about Georgia Southern, Alex Mash on the defensive side, Joe Dupree on offense. Alex Mash, preseason uh, Southern Conference Defensive Player of the Year. He's lived up to that billing this part of the season. And for Joe Dupree, he wrestled the starting job away from Charles Bostick before the season, after spring practice, and, and it has been a little bit up and down. He has got to take control of that offense. On the other side, Brent David, the little middle linebacker, is the key to the defense for the Mountaineers, and Chip Hooks is going to have to get it done as far as offensively. Jerry Moore, the head coach of Appalachian State, says that their defense dresses in Brent David's locker. He's a sideline to sideline tacker. He's got to play this flex bone offense of Georgia Southern. He's a big key for it. Chip Hooks is a quick little tailback, and, and the Appalachian State coaches feel like if he gets better than 100 yards, they've got a real good chance of winning. Okay, let's talk about the keys to this ball game first. Let's go with Georgia Southern. Well, for Georgia Southern, their offense has got to produce. Their defense has been playing great all season long. It's kept them in there. It's time for their offense to carry a little bit more of the load. Dupree, we said he's got to start taking charge of this football team. I think the, the team is looking for leadership from him at that offensive spot, and they've got to keep that plus 12 turnover ratio they're getting. They do a great job of blocking punts and, and blocking field goals and extra points. On the other hand, you look at Appalachia State, if we want to talk about the, uh, the punting, well, that's something that's happened to them. They've had five blocks. They've got to take better care of it. They've got to have a better start in these games. Uh, this game today is important for them to get out the gate real quick. They need to improve their passing. Less than 50% completion ratio. If you're going to throw less than that, you don't have a chance to come from behind or you don't have a chance maybe to convert third down. All right, we'll have the kickoff when we come back to Boone, North Carolina, next on Sports South. We have to... We know. Comes out onto the field. A beautiful afternoon for football here in the heart of the Appalachian Mountains. Appalachian coming in one in five on the season. It's been a very disappointing year so far for Jerry Moore. Now let's go down onto the field. Sideline reporter Mark Martin. Mark. All right. Thank you very much, Kevin. Great to be with you and Jeff this afternoon here in beautiful Boone. And for Jerry Moore and his Appalachian State Mountaineers, they know simply that they're out of the conference race, but they could play a spoiler. What better place to start here this afternoon than against the current first place team, Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern, their first year in the league, and they want to come away with the championship and subsequently go into the 1AA playoffs, but this is not an easy place to win. Since 1985, Appalachian State has a record of 23-4-1 against Southern Conference opponents. We'll see how Georgia Southern shapes up here this afternoon against that record. Again, great to be with you guys this afternoon. Have a good broadcast. We'll see you a bit later on. All right, thanks, Mark. Well, Appalachian won the toss, and they have deferred to the second half. So they will kick it away, and we'll see a potent offense go on attack first for Georgia Southern, although as of the last couple of weeks, it has been struggling. You see what they have done overall throughout the entire season coming into tonight's game, and the rushing right there, almost 200 more yards for Georgia Southern. They're not a team that's going to put it up in the air a whole lot. That's Alan Gwynn, a freshman from Laurenburg, North Carolina, with it teed up at the 35-yard line. And he will get set to kick it away to Chris Wright, who stands in a single safety back at the goal line. And 
And we're underway from Boone, North Carolina. Chris Wright from the goal line. Oh, and Wright is stuck at the 20-yard line. Brian Wozni came through Wozni, a freshman from Mooresville, North Carolina. And if Wozni had not hit him, there was a huge lane to run through. But he took care of business. Chris Wright, outstanding speed. I saw him return a kickoff against Furman last year in the second half. They got Georgia Southern jump started. You're right, though, Kevin. That was a big hole if Wozni's not there. And there's Joe Dupree. You see the numbers on him. He won't throw it a whole lot. He's only thrown for 300 yards. But this is what they will do is they pitch it back to Chris Wright. And Wright gets up to the 26-yard line, counted off at 6 on the first play of the game. They'll go option left, option right, any kind of option you can think of. Georgia Southern will run it. They like to get the ball outside lately, too. Uh, originally, they started more inside with their big fullback, James Williams, Tyrone Stevens sometimes. But they've been getting it to Shaft and Fraley and Wright wide and uh, that's something I'm sure that's got Appalachian State concerned to cover the whole field. The ball out to the 25 yard line brings up second down and five. On the opening drive of the game. They go with quick hitter right up the middle. James Williams falls ahead for a gain of a couple. That uh, defensive front up front for Appalachian in to make the stop. Jason Hatcher led the way the freshman from Clearwater, Florida. And it's going to bring up a third down situation talked about Appalachian getting off to a quick start but we take a look at Georgia Southern in the offensive line the anchor in the middle Robert Moore Ayub is making his 43rd straight start backs and receivers all of them very very dangerous Darren Willis and Dawson on the outside so third down for Georgia Southern again the option nowhere to go nowhere to hide Appalachian defense is there to make the stop. It's Larry Dennis, the outside linebacker, in to knock Georgia Southern running back Marlo Warthen off his feet. Now punt time for Georgia Southern. Well, you can see right there where James Williams unable to get the block on Kenny Bright and allows time for that inside linebacker, their fine inside linebacker, Brent David, to come inside out. Don Blue back deep to feel this punt. Beautiful high spiral. And Don Blue from the 32. Boy, Don Blue had nowhere to go. There were Eagles all over. Derek Austin, the first man to get down after a punt of 42 yards. No return. But we're scoreless in Boone, North Carolina. We'll be back in just a moment. Back to Boone, North Carolina. We're scoreless. Appalachian going on offense for the first time. I think it was important for the Appalachian defense to get a big stop on third down and three plays and punt for Georgia Southern. Well, it sets a tone for their defense the rest of the day. They know now that they can play that option as long as they play assignment free football. No mistakes, and everybody's where they're supposed to be. There you saw Scott Satterfield, and they'll go from the eye. On first down, Chip Hooks, and Hooks goes ahead for a couple, maybe up to the 35-yard line. The offensive line for Appalachian State is a very big offensive line. They're going to give up. They're going to give up about 25 pounds a man, as far as uh, being heavier than the D Georgia Southern defensive line. Groover, the anchor in the middle, and then in the backs and receivers, Scott Satterfield getting the start. Then it's Hooks, Gamma on the outside, along with Don Blue. So second down and eight. They're going to throw it on second down. Has a man over the middle, and it's complete to Don Blue. And Don Blue is out over the 40-yard line, out to the 42. Scott Davis with the tackle. Blue just a step away from turning that one into a first down play. You look at App Appalachian State here. They go to three wides, and they clear out, running Gamma down the middle, and also uh, number 84, Greg Thomas. Oh, I'm sorry, that was uh, Kevin Burton running down the middle and clearing it out, letting Blue work underneath. Good, good approach to their offense. They need to get something established with that passing early. Third down and two. And we'll see if it's enough for a first down. It's going to be very close. It was Smith on the carry. The big fullback, the junior from Emeracali, Florida. Oh! It is a first down. 
talked about the great start so far. It's been a pretty good start for the Mountaineers coming in at one and five. Well, this is what you want. Your offense and defensive teams to feel settled here at home, not make any mistakes early, move the chains a little bit. Not necessarily they have to score, but keep field position in perspective. Chip Hooks looking for an opening. Nothing doing, maybe a gain of a couple. Very strong in pursuit is the Georgia Southern defense. Charlie Burt led the way, a junior from Winter Haven, Florida led that defense. Now this defense is really what Georgia Southern has been hanging their hat on all season long because their their offense has not been that productive. You see it there, uh, uh, both pulling both guards, trying the old Green Bay sweep, USC power sweep, whatever you want to call it. And Georgia Southern uses their great quickness to get their people over there. You see the linebackers very, very active. Second down and eight, Hooks. Up, they keep it on the play action. Satterfield with a big gainer inside the 35 yard line to the 34 that was a great play action fake because he had me going it was it was all a fake in the backfield and everybody was was going for the running back look you can see georgia southern all jump in on i guess that's smith the fullback i did not see who the number was but satterfield nice fake and look at the block you don't see it at the top of your screen it's by volmer the tight end doing a good job on scott davis number 55 the outside linebacker Picks up an extra eight or nine yards from that block alone. It was a gain of 26 for Scott Satterfield. Now they hand it off. This is Hooks, and Hooks will go down at the 33-yard line. So a little razzle-dazzle. We told we were told to expect that early. You know, a team comes in one and five. You really don't know what to look for, but you know they've got to get something to get things going. Coach Jerry Moore's got uh, his team at least sized up to keep Georgia Southern maybe a little bit off balance by look at the change of formations you're seeing one back you're seeing two back they're bringing the tight end in they're, they're playing all wides with no tight ends as they are in this formation and two backs really changing up the looks against this Georgia Southern defense again from the eye second down and short chip hooks again gets outside inside the 20 and down at the 15 yard line and Appalachia knocking off huge chunks of real estate on this first drive. Nick Davis, a senior from Griffin, Georgia, finally made the stop. Chip Hooks out of Decatur, Georgia. He's got 2,500 yards rushing in his career here. Nice block by Brad Orth, the right tackle, and Michael Morris, 91, the left defensive end. And then it's Hooks. He's got, he's got great speed. He doesn't have the size, 5'7", 155. He's got to use that, si that speed of his and change of direction to make some of these big guys miss. Appalachian inside the 15, first man, Johnny Smith, goes ahead for a couple. That's one of those plays just to keep the defense honest. He gets down near the 11-yard line. You know, Kevin, you know you're right. A lot of teams do that. They just, it's like you, you think of it sometimes as a give-up play because rarely does it hit for the big distance. And uh, I think when you get down inside the 10 or 15-yard line, though, that's when your play selection has got to be of the utmost importance. And maybe this is the time to try a little bit of a trick play, especially on first down or a pass on first down. We got three wideouts you see to the top of the screen on second down and eight. Here comes the reverse. Inside the 10, down to the eight yard line. Kevin Burton was run out of bounds by Rob Stockton Burton, a freshman from Columbia, South Carolina. He's caught the ball nine times, but this time he gets a chance to run. Look at Rob Stockton. He's beating right in on Burton. He he smelled that play out right at the start of it. Charlie Burke, the left defensive end, number 57, doing a pretty good job himself. He doesn't have the speed maybe to catch Kevin Burton, but he didn't allow the cut back inside so Rob Stockton could have the inside out tackle. So third down and two. From the six yard line, Chip Hooks doesn't have the first down. Well, he has met and met rudely. Leading the way is Paul Carroll. Nick Davis also in. It wasn't so much the first guys up front doing the job, but the linebackers filling the holes. And then we go back to that very first down play where they, they almost wasted it down in there. And you, you resort to now having to just settle for three points instead of maybe getting the seven. Nice job by Paul Carroll. We weren't expecting him to play today. He's been bothered by a neck injury. Back in there at middle linebacker. Here's Kyler Ferguson to try a field goal. He is perfect. So for the first time this year, the Mountaineers of Appalachian have scored in the first quarter. We'll be back to Boone, North Carolina in just a moment.
The Wildcats bear down on the Cardinal. For some real food, South Carolina, smiling faces, beautiful places. And U.S. Air, the official airline of the Southern Conference. U.S. Air begins with you. Oh, with me. Getting even with me, aren't you? Georgia Southern to receive it. This is Chris Wright. Right from the five-yard line. And Wright gets out to the 26, where Georgia Southern will go on offense there. As I said before, we went to the break. That's the first time Appalachian has scored this season in the first quarter. We talked about him getting off to a great start. They have so far. Well, just to, just on the basis of the two series, uh, you know, Appalachian State's got to feel good where they are right now. Georgia Southern usually outscores their opponents about two to one in the first quarter. We'll have to see how this quarter ends, but they, they have yet to get their offense cranked on that first series. Joe Dupree under center. Dupree on the option. Back to the line of scrimmage and maybe a gain of one. Hatcher, the first guy to get to him for Appalachian. Also, Kevin Sikorsky in on the stop for the Mountaineers. You got a great middle linebacker as this uh, Brent David is. You'll see a lot of times, they'll change it up some, but a lot of times they'll pinch all their linemen in, allow David to do the scraping. Also, Dexter Coakley, young freshman, 32. He can fly for an inside linebacker, only 5'11", 190. Uh, Brent David Moore, the uh, true size of a linebacker, 6'1", 235, but, but you watch David move. They want him to make most of the tackles. So second down and eight for Georgia Southern. Dupree to throw it for the first time. Has his man and picked off. Brent David. David's not finished. It'll take 11 men to take him down. Down to the 25-yard line. An 18-yard return. We're talking to Coach Tim Stowers uh, before the game today. They talked about Joe Dupree's passing, and he says the long, long passes, he's, he's doing all right. He's having some success on. Very short passes, he is too. The intermediate routes, which this was one, is what gives him trouble. In this case, though, it's Darren Willis tipping the ball in the air. There's a catch maybe a little bit out in front of him, but he could have had it, and then David runs like a fullback afterwards. Well, I mean, a big-time fullback. And that was one, really, I think Darren Willis should have brought in, kind of short-armed that one. So Appalachian with another golden opportunity. Satterfield to throw. A lot of time, and this one incomplete and should have been picked off. Should have been answered right there by Georgia Southern. Nick Davis, senior from Griffin, Georgia, was really looked like the intended receiver on that one. Satterfield was hoping that the linebackers would drop deep as he ran his wideouts. Gammon blew down deep, and Vollmer slipping out a little bit late. Nick Davis wasn't fooled. It wasn't a very good pass, though. Second down and 10. Satterfield will keep it himself. Drugged down by Rob Stockton after a gain of 13 yards. Well, just tremendous blocking by Georgia, I mean by Appalachian State on the corners out here. You watch them on the corners here. You see their fullback, Jimmy Smith, throwing at 55, Scott Davis. He then options on Alt or Sean Austin and is able to pick up the, the yardage, but they sealed it inside with their offensive line. Got a nice block out of their fullback, Jimmy Smith, on Scott Davis. So first down and 10. From the 12-yard line, Johnny Smith up the middle, gets it down to the 10-yard line, interior line. Alex Mash and Walter Flowers leading the way for Georgia Southern. We're two series into the game. That's the first time we've made mention of Alex Mash. That is unusual. And that was on a fullback dive where they were just coming right at him. You're right. They have been, uh, been keeping him quiet in the early going. 3 nothing Appalachian. Leads it early in the first quarter, make it midway through the first quarter. And another golden opportunity here after the interception. Now this is going to cost Appalachian five yards. John McFall, a junior from Rayford, North Carolina, went on one, and I think the play was on two. You look at that left side of the Appalachian State offensive line. Start from the center, Groover, 6'6", 275. Cadillac is about uh, 6'285". 
And oh, they're starting Derek Spencer instead of Derek Farkas in there today. Farkas was in there. He's six foot nine, three, three, three fifty-seven. Three fifty-seven. Some phenomenal size over there going against Alex Mash. He's about a, a two hundred fifty-five pound man himself, but that is an awful lot of size, and they've been running left. Second down and twelve. Hooks on the delay. If Hooks can get outside, nothing doing. Francis Williams came up from the cornerback spot. Also, Michael Morris coming from the interior line. Morris, a junior from Adele, Georgia. And Brannis Williams, a sophomore from Baxley, Georgia. This is the strength of uh, Georgia Southern, their D-line, except Walter Flowers getting his first start today. Uh, a true freshman, 5'11", 261 out of Savannah, number 95. Uh, he gets a, a good look at what he can do along with a veteran player. Line to make is the two-yard line. Gamma over the middle, make it Don Blue. He can't hold on. Well, Don Blue had some real estate to run, but wasn't able to hang on to the football. So they'll call on Kyler Ferguson to try his second field goal of the afternoon. Just a pass to make sure you don't make any mistakes down here. They, they, they're settling for the field goal. Third and uh, about 12, that was long yardage, and they haven't thrown the long ball yet. Everything has been underneath. So Kyler Ferguson, well within his range, a 31-yard attempt is good, but let's check the marker. Didn't see it. It's against Georgia Southern, but they're going to let those points stand. It's only five yards here. Well, they're going to let them stand anyway. You're not, they're not going to take them off down here. That's yeah, offsides as Ron Buckner gives us the call. Southern Conference referee. Offsides. Defense declined. Field goal good. So the field goal stands. The cannon sounds and the scoreboard moves to six to nothing. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back to Boone, North Carolina in just a moment. The cannon located beneath her feet. You know how fast. A big crowd is on hand and they have liked what they have seen thus far here in Boone, North Carolina as their Mountaineers lead it by a score of six to nothing. And, uh, so far, they've been able to take advantage of the mistakes from Georgia Southern, creating a few of their own as well. Brent David with the INT earlier uh, that really set up that second field goal. Alan Gwynn will kick it away. This one will take Chris Wright, and he will take a knee seven yards deep in the end zone. So it's been all Appalachian State so far. Georgia Southern's got to get something going. They got to be talking to themselves offensively right now. They've got to get something going on the offensive side of the football. Well, you, you talk to their staff and they, they wanted their team to come out and play good on the road. That's one of the things that it has not done. It goes back five games and, and uh, they, their staff talks about their best road game was last year, their opener against Furman. And so they just have not played well on the road, not this year against Marshall and that loss. And they need to get it cranked up. But you can't panic. You, you got to stay with your offense. They hand it off straight up the middle goes James Williams. Williams, a senior from Thomasville, Georgia, who's rushed for about 330 yards coming into today's game. Averages right at four and a half yards a carry. He takes it ahead for two or three. So it'll bring up a second down and seven. Williams fought off the uh, challenge of young Tyrone Stevens, a, a junior in the spring and early in this season. He's established himself as the starting fullback. He's a man to give it to. Dupree will option. Pitch it back again, and this time short of the first down, but it's going to bring up a third down and short. Good pursuit that time by Appalachian's defensive uh, front, but Marlo Warthen was able to get around the corner. Just a little bit of a change up maybe in the blocking scheme. They're bringing, bringing the backside guard, Isaac Farrell, and they've started uh, Franklin Stevens at center now, and Isaac Farrell's got to come all the way around and pick up that linebacker. This is Brent David. That is a difficult thing to ask him because of Brent David's speed and quickness and recognition getting outside. Third down and three. Georgia Southern. Williams has the first down. Stepped out of bounds by, a, has the first down by about a half a yard. And had he not picked it up that time, that'd have been three straight, three plays and punts for Georgia Southern, but now, they will have it for three, at least three more plays. And they come back at the left side again. Quentin King 
and not a very big man playing this outside backer, 6'2", 192 pounds, but great job by Joe Dupree to, to seal Quentin King, make him honor him, and then make the pitch. Just nice timing, and that's what you got to do with this option offense. The quarterback's got to make the right decisions. Dupree's a junior. He's been there before, and he's going to try to throw it. Looking for the big play, wide open and can't hold on. At the 35-yard line is Chris Wright. Boy, I tell you what, if that one had been on the money, it'd be 7-6 to six right now. Well, you can see how many men that Appalachian State is committing to the run. You've got the safety up there. Matt Stevens is, is, is up looking for the run, trying to help out. Chris Wright is wide open. He would still be running if the ball is not just a little bit overthrown. Yeah, Tim Stowers will be sending the extra point team one right now. And that's another thing you have to think about, too. Appalachian has been, really dominated this entire first half, but they've only got, they've gotten two scores, but they've been two field goals. They're touchdown away from making this a whole totally different ball game. What a great play on the outside. Jamie Coleman, the sophomore from Laurenburg, North Carolina, stepped up from his cornerback spot and took Chris right down. Kind of a naked screen. They're blocking downfield. I think it's Dexter Dawson is blocking downfield as the split end. But the recognition by Coleman, he's got no, he doesn't have anybody blocking him. And they're going to ask Chris Wright to make him miss, make catch that ball and make a move and make him miss. He, he's unable to do it. That's gutsy for a cornerback who just saw a, a running or a wide receiver get behind them like that to be playing that tight. But he was. This is Dupree, and Dupree is going to be short, of, well short of the first down. And Georgia Southern is going to have to putt. Offense like this, it'll stutter and, and sputter along a lot if you don't make positive plays almost every time. And when you get a screen play like that thrown for your loss, you're not going to get it. So Bill Thatcher will come in and kick it away. And a well-deserved round of applause as that defense comes off the field for Appalachian. Now Thatcher kicks it away. Don Blue will field it. And Blue goes for a return of three yards. The special teams look very good right now for Georgia Southern. 40-yard punt, a three-yard return, and Appalachian will go back on offense where they've pretty much been all afternoon. The offense has been on the field. Georgia Southern's defense has got to be getting tired here pretty soon. Well, the thing about, as you just mentioned a minute ago, Kevin, just being up 6 nothing, you're just one play away from being ahead in a game like this. And uh, with, with your special teams and your defense and your offense, you've got three different areas to score. That's why Georgia Southern has been scoring. So from the 33-yard line, leading 6 nothing, Appalachian will scrimmage. That one thrown away. Somebody didn't get the right read, and it was between Ray Gamma and Don Blue. Somebody was supposed to do an out, and nobody did. Well, Don Blue and Ray Gamma both talking to each other, and I'm sure they're talking to Scott Satterfield. He's waving one way, they're waving another, and uh, just a miscommunication. He wanted the out, and it was there if somebody had made the break. Satterfield is making his second straight start. They've had three quarterbacks each start two games for Appalachian. That's a team really looking for an identity. You know, you've got two guys, or three guys, and each of them get two starts in six games. This is Chip Hooks, and Hooks has the first down, slicing through out near the 45-yard line, a gain of 11 yards before Scott Davis made the tackle, a junior from Powder Springs, Georgia. We watch the left side of that offensive line come off the ball. On Alex Mash, the double team inside there, and a great job on that left side. The big Farkas, the big tackle is in there. Cadlip is in there. Groover, the center. Bomer, they did a nice job of coming off on Georgia Southern. Like a wave. Satterfield being pressured. Satterfield's got a lot of room to run. Has the first down. And steps out of bounds at the 39-yard line after picking up 16 yards. And he was escorted step for step by Edward Thomas. But Thomas just couldn't catch him. Well, you don't see this very often. Alex Mash is back there for a sack, as is Lee Brooks. Both have a shot at Satterfield. He's able to escape him. He wanted to go with a deep ball. Georgia Southern applying pretty good pressure, first by Paul Carroll. But you don't see Alex Mash miss, miss many sacks. He's got seven on the year already. Defensively, that has to be very discouraging because you do a good job in coverage. You do a good job putting pressure on the quarterback, but he steps through and picks up 16. 
Satterfield again on the option will cut it up. Oh, they say never leave your feet, and that is why. <laughs> Satterfield hurdle, hurdles down to the 35-yard line, but he's going to be a little shaky getting up. He's been impressive, though, in this first uh, quarter. I mean, he's, he's taken charge of this game. Simple, a, a quarterback rollout. There is an option there if he wants it. He just sees something, though. He gets a nice block on Charlie Burt from his fullback, Jimmy Smith, decides to take it up top. And as you said, that's a wrong decision Nick, a lot of times for a quarterback. Nick Davis helped him turned in over in there. Well, second down and five. Satterfield flags down. Satterfield looking at and throwing. It's incomplete, out of bounds. Kevin Burton probably wasn't able to get both feet down, but let's check the penalty marker back at the line of scrimmage. Flag came out a little bit late after the play had started. But it's an illegal shift against Appalachian. Boy, that did come out awful late, didn't it? You must have seen it and held it for a, a little longer. There's was... Jerry Moore in his fifth season. 31 wins, 22 losses here in Appalachian. He's never coached against Georgia Southern. He's a real fine receiver himself for Baylor back in the 60s. On the offense. You think Five of uh, penalty, coaches who, who go on to be head coach or, or coaches, and they you think they'd want to put that kind of offense in that they were successful in, as Tim Stowers, an offensive lineman, kind of likes the running game. Jerry Moore came here after a, has being a head coach at the University of North Texas, or back at that time it was North Texas State. Now it's the University of North Texas. Also coached in the Southwest Conference at Texas Tech. Satterfield and company from the 40-yard line after the five-yard markoff. On second down, they look to set up the screen. Here's Hooks, and Hooks is drugged down at the 45-yard line. But Nick Davis would not go for it at all. The play was slow developing, but the screen never really got there. No, he took too long setting it up. A screen is a timing play. You're going to get one lineman out in front of you maybe, but you've got like a 1,001, 1,002, 1,003 count. Everybody's working on a timing play. He took a long time looking downfield, allowed the defense a lot of time to react to it. If Nick Davis doesn't make the play, they've got someone else over in the same area. I'm not sure who it was, but I think the cornerback was over there. Third and 15 for Don Blue. Intercepted, and no, it was dropped. It hit the ground. I'll tell you what. Darius Dawson would like to have that one back because it hit him right in the five on the front of the jersey. Yeah, Alex Smash, watch him inside. He jumps between the center and guard gap. I think that's uh, Farkas trying to block on him, and you see the ball having maybe to be released a little bit early, but uh, you got to pull those in if you got any kind of hand on him at all. Well, Will Burkett, who has had his problems this season, will punt it away. Oh. High snap. Burkett will try to get rid of it and does that this is going to be a big time play for Georgia Southern. Now coming in, Burkett had had five punts blocked on the other side. Georgia Southern had blocked four punts. Well, that time we didn't get the block, but uh, all kinds of problems for Appalachian special teams. That has killed them all season long. Well, it's the, it's the snap of the football, and uh, this one is over his head. He doesn't really have a chance to get it. you got to remember that this team had an All-American punter Harold Alexander now playing for the Atlanta Falcons, a great punter, and they've changed punters, and, and this fellow's had his... This fellow really has had his problems uh, with the, the different punt snappers, and they just haven't been able to get into sync at all in their punt game. Stuart Dixon was the center who sent it over the head of Will Burkett. Offensive lineman cannot touch that football, and... I think Will needs to be schooled a little bit on what to happen in a situation like that if you're ever faced Illegal with Illegal touching. Against the offense, that's declined. The illegal pass against the offense, that's loss of down. Five yards, spot of the play. Okay. Talk about Appalachia State's uh, punting and, uh, and special teams. The special teams have been a real strength for this Georgia Southern team. 
Well, the scoreboard reads zeros. The Mountaineers lead it six to nothing. One quarter down. We'll be back for the second quarter in just a moment on Sports South. Appalachian special teams have been anything but special. Take a look at it. Well, just a, he does a great job, Burkett, knocking the ball down, maybe not letting go to the end of the end zone. It was a pretty good whip on the ball, but then his judgment of just throwing the ball forward and uh, an offensive lineman, heck, uh, number 67 or a linebacker, he, you know, he loves just to get his hands on the football. He's going to catch it. That was Jason Tindall from Apex, North Carolina. Joe Dupree gets down to the 12-yard line, so great field position for Georgia Southern. So the breaks finally go back the other way. Now Georgia Southern finally catches a break. Georgia. Down on the field, yeah, is Hatcher. Jason Hatcher, a freshman from Clearwater, Florida. Well, I saw Joe Dupree earlier this year uh, playing against Citadel. He had, a, he had about a 53-yard run in that game. Uh, had a nice nice game as far as rushing and and uh, does a good job with the football, but not maybe uh, consistent enough as far as uh, it hasn't really come together for him yet. There's Jerry Moore. Got to be talking to himself, thinking, why can't we get the uh, the punt team down? Well, you look at uh, Jerry Moore's had a lot of success here in the Southern Conference. His team, his teams, uh, this is uh, have, have been top four finishers. Uh, uh, the last four years, they were in the playoffs last year. Appalachian State has got a, a proud tradition in the Southern Conference of being very successful. But when you turn over 24 Letterman, and 12 of them played more than 20 games in, in their career, nine of them uh, started a lot more than that. Uh, there were four-year Letterman, 12 of them, and nine of them started more than 20 games. You lose people like that. You lose your four-year starting quarterback, a guy that started 47 games for you, and you get a couple of injuries. It looks like Vincent Fraley is not going to play today. He's normally one of the starting defensive linemen. Now his replacement, and they're playing a little bit of different defense, a 3-4 instead of a four-man line. Hatcher looks like he's uh, injured right now. They've had a number of injuries. They have a very young football team. They've turned over a lot of people. They really have, and it's been the turnovers. <laughs> part of the, I guess that's one of the parts of success whenever you, you get a veteran team together you have a good year well the next year you know you're gonna have to do some rebuilding and that's exactly what Appalachian is having to do today or to do this year yeah they've had some success here they they uh, they've challenged for this Southern Conference an awful lot finished ranked uh, number 16 last year I think preseason people thought that they were going to be much better they just have not uh, really got consistent on offense until maybe the last three games they started cranking out some big time yardage uh, with their offense and their defense is, uh, has been led by those two inside linebackers. Bender, I mean Brent David and uh, Dexter Coakley. Well at one in five, Appalachian has lost to North Carolina a and They've lost to Liberty, Wake Forest, and last week they lost to Furman. You see the series history. Now before 1987, the last meeting between these two teams was 1939. First meeting of course, in 1932, that was in the first round of the NCAA Division I AA playoffs. And as we touched a little bit earlier on it, a huge storm came in on Friday night, the night before that game. Temperatures were at 10 below zero when this game started. This is the kind of weather that can happen in Boone, North Carolina, as we were way up in the mountains of North Carolina. Temperatures never got above 10 degrees that afternoon. Swarming defense for Appalachian. And back to that game, Irk Russell said he wanted to play that game, who was the head coach at Georgia Southern, said he wanted to play that game under protest because the conditions were that bad. Irk is a legend in, uh, in Georgia football, legend in college football for that matter, winning four national titles. And, and you think of some of the coaches that come through Appalachian State. Mac Brown was here. Fisher DeBerry was here. Sparky Woods has been here. They, they have had... Uh, their share of fine coaches along with Jerry Moore. Big third down for Georgia Southern offense. Dupree goes to the end zone and it's picked off. Kenny Bright, the senior from Hamlet, North Carolina, gets it back for Appalachian. A lot of people around that football. And the least of them not uh, Kenny Bright as he is. It puts himself in great position for a big interception. Joe Dupree trying to probably go to Dexter Dawson down here. 
And the Kenny Bright is able to just kind of step in front of that football. And not only you get the turnover there, that's what's so big is the fact that you're really keeping a sure three points off the board with that interception. Kind of negates the fact that you had a bad uh, snap on your punt. Team. Exactly. So that break just erased by Appalachian's defense, who has played very well. Chip Hooks goes ahead for maybe a couple as they bring the ball out to the 22-yard line. So everything has gone Appalachian's way. Even the mistakes that Appalachian has made, Georgia Southern has answered with a mistake of their own to even things out. Once again, great pursuit to, by the Georgia Southern line, and you counter that maybe as, as Appalachian State did earlier with a reverse, with a counter, with something coming back to the wide side of the field. Satterfield pitches it to Hooks, and a dangerous pitch. Hooks falls ahead to the 22-yard line, but Brandon Roselle, and I've seen this happen, people intercept uh, an option pitch. Brandon Roselle was very close to doing that number 20 for Georgia Southern. Watch 20 come into the picture. Well, he's, he fights off the block of the wide receiver, 82 Scott Yachty's. Does a nice job, well played by Sean Austin, but here Scott Yachty's is unable to block Brandon Roselle, so he takes on two, two responsibilities. Not only does he get rid of the block, but he's also there to pick up the pitch man, and you're right, he could have maybe reacted if that block was a little bit less, he might have gotten there a step sooner and taken it all away. Appalachian facing third down and eight. Satterfield. Will be short of the first down as he's run down at the 27 yard line. So it's been an adventure, but we'll see it happen again as it's punt time for Appalachian. And I didn't see who was uh, punch snapping on that very first one. Well, they were working on it on the sidelines over here. And it's Danny Bentley now in to do the deep snapping. And this is a good snap. And almost blocked. Nice high punt taken by Dawson. And Dawson breaks away out near midfield, out to the 48-yard line. Jeff Vollmer saved the touchdown. Second quarter, our score. A Mountaineer six. Georgia Southern Eagles nothing. We'll be back to Boone in just a moment. You're watching Sports South Network. That'll give you an idea of how beautiful it is here in Boone, North Carolina. This is the peak weekend of the season, the change in the colors. It is uh, magnificent driving in here from Johnson City, Tennessee. You have to see it to believe it. There was a face masking call on that last return. So Georgia Southern starts in Appalachian territory as they pitch it back. Williams has good yardage. James Williams, a senior from Thomasville, Georgia, out near a first down. Standing by down on the field, Mark Martin has an update for us. Mark? Guys, we saw Jason Hatcher go down with the injury. He was in severe pain here on the sideline. They have taken him into the locker room for an X-ray. They're looking at a possible fractured fibula. We should know more before the half is over. Tough break for the freshman lineman. Let's go back upstairs. Thank you, Mark. And one thing Jerry Moore does not need is to have any of his players, especially the starters, getting hurt. Hand off right up the middle, nothing doing. Back to the line of scrimmage and no more for the fullback, James Williams. Well, the replacements, though, are not doing badly in the middle of that line still. With Hatcher gone, it's Peoples, and, and I'm not sure if that's uh, Vincent Fraley or not in there right now. But uh, Quentin King got a piece of that last one, the senior from Plant City, Florida. Now third down and seven. Dupree to go to the air. Complete to Dexter Dawson. And Dawson is down at the 20-yard line. And I tell you what, had Joe Dupree not been a great athlete, he'd have never gotten a chance to throw that football. He did a great job. He's pulling up a little bit lame here along the sideline, too. But he did a nice job of stiff-arming Brent David. 
He shoots the middle, the, the fine middle linebacker for Appalachian State, shoots the middle. He kind of pushes him off with his arm, a little bit of a stiff arm. And then he's got the presence to wave. I think he's waving not at Dexter Dawson, who catches his football, but Chris Wright, or Payne, rather, over here on the right side. You can't see him. He waves him, and it pulls the coverage away from Dexter Dawson. That's who he throws to. Gain of 23 yards down to the 21. Dawson, that's what you call finding the seam in the defense. Here we go on first down. Dupree cuts it up. 15-yard line goes down there. Talk about your freelancers. And he had to be sandbagging on that leg injury. Did you see him make that cut there? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think he was trying to fool the defense a little bit when he limped back into the huddle like he couldn't run. Uh, that was a pretty decent cut he made to take that ball up for a pretty decent gain at five or six yards. Brian G. Mary made the tackle. But the ball inside the 15-yard line. What a great job Tim Stowers has done in his fourth year. 30 and 13 the mark, plus a Division I AA National Championship. Dupree tried to cut it up, but there was really nowhere to go, thanks to Dexter Copley, a freshman from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Here's an instance where maybe the fullback needs to have the ball. James Williams, instead of keeping and taking around the outside, and uh, both the, the right side of their offensive line, Joey Cushing, Miguel Ayub, they both were down about five or six yards, and Williams was running with them. Everybody making the tackle, though, on Joe Dupree. 9.29 to play. Dupree wants a timeout. He's going to talk it over with Tim Stowers. 6 nothing. the Mountaineers lead it. A big third down for Georgia Southern. Dupree on the quarterback draw. Dupree will score. Joe Dupree from 15 yards out. Oh, what an excellent call by Mike Hodges, I'm going to assume, their offensive coordinator over there in the Georgia Southern booth. Look at this block that James Williams puts on Brent David, the middle linebacker, and that's the one that springs him free. Dupree with a big touchdown last week to pull the game out against Western Carolina. Right at the end, this is a big touchdown right here. And Reed Haley to kick it through for the point after, and does. So Appalachian has had the upper hand for the most part of this second quarter. But just like that, Georgia Southern is up 7-6. to six. The Sports of College Football Blitz. Rushing in a Southern Conference matchup. The Mountaineers try to withstand the attack of the thundering herd. Live next Saturday on Sports South. It's time for AC Delco's Great Offensive Play of the Week, sponsored by AC Delco Automotive Parts. Available for almost any vehicle, they can help your car or truck last and last. AC Delco, it's like buying time. With second and one at the 15-yard line, quarterback Danny O'Neill of the Oregon Ducks throws a high lofting pass to wide out Chris McLemore in the end zone. Even with pass interference from USC defensive back John Herpin, McLemore was able to climb the ladder and bring down the perfectly placed touchdown pass. Just like that, Georgia Southern leads it 7-6 to six as Eric Smith gets set to kick it away. Dupree with a 15-yard touchdown run. Gets Georgia Southern back on top, or on top for the first time today. This is Nate Abraham from his goal line. And Abraham, boy, out to the 14-yard line. Both teams have done a good job on the, their kickoff teams. Now let's go down on the field. Mark, who you got a guest? All right, thank you very much, Kevin. Joined by the fine athletic director here at Appalachian State University, Mr. Rachel Laney. And well, I know you liked the score up until just a moment ago. Oh, yes. You know, it's been a very competitive game. We knew that it would be. Well, Georgia Southern's a fine program. So we're in for an exciting afternoon. Your third year overall as athletic director here at Appalachian State, but you've been on board almost 20 years. Uh, does it seem possible that time has flown by that quickly? Well, not really, because it's been wonderful years. Uh, we have a tremendous university and sports program here. So it's it's fun. It's a great job with a great university. You had us down to possibly the most beautiful time of the year. Very much so. We're at the peak of leaf season. The town's loaded with people. Unfortunately, a lot of them didn't show up here this afternoon. But it is a wonderful setting, a, a great institution we have, and one of the most 
beautiful places in the world. All right, Rachel, great seeing you, and thanks for being with us. Thank you. All right, let's go back upstairs to Kevin and Jeff. Uh, right about the peak season of the, uh, the foliage, you can't get a hotel room in this town either. Here's Satterfield. Satterfield with a big gainer out over the 30-yard line, a first down, and a gain of 14 yards for Appalachian. Appalachian had been struggling offensively until that play right there. They really needed that. Yeah, their base plays are not working. This is that little bootleg, that naked bootleg that he ran. He gets a nice block here from uh, Farkas in the inside. I think that was against Walter Flowers, and he does a good job of, of getting positive yardage out of it. He made a big play of this on their first drive for a field goal, and this is what they need to do. They're not working very well with their base offense. You see Dupree took it in from 15 yards, capping that six-play, 47-yard drive for Georgia Southern a moment ago. Chip Hooks cuts it back out to the 40-yard line, out to the 41, and on first down, knocks off seven yards. A little easier to go at it on second down and three. Well, once again, Kevin Farkas, uh, the six-foot-nine, 300 and. 37 pound man he is a giant out there he's easy to pick out number 61 look at hook standing next to him <laughs> 5 7 155 but he does a nice job and this is one of what has been his problems uh, talking to the the Appalachian State coaches is staying after the blocks here he does a really good job of staying after Nick Davis Fighting for extra yardage, Johnny Smith has the first down, and Johnny Smith goes up to the 45-yard line, and a first down for Appalachian. 1990 Coach of the Year, Tim Stowers, won the national championship in 1990 as well. He's in his fourth year. He's won a lot more than he's lost, folks. 30 wins, 13 losses. The last three plays have been directed at the left side once again of Appalachia State's offensive line, large offensive line. Chip Hooks got, got some good blocks in front, cuts it up inside Eagle territory to the 49-yard line. One thing about Chip Hooks, when he makes a decision, he goes ahead and sticks his head in there. He's got uh, 10 100-yard rushing games here. That's third on the all-time list. And there you see that contrast <laughs> again on the screen between Farkas and Chip Hooks. That is amazing. John Settles, the all-time 100-yard rusher here, played with the Atlanta Falcons, had a 1,000-yard rusher all pro year with them one year and finished his career with the Redskins. He's got 2,200-yard days. They try him again. And Hooks falls forward near a first down, always going north and south. We'll see, it depends on the mark as far as whether or not he got this first down. I believe he did. Five-plus career average and see he doesn't mind running inside even at his size he does not mind mixing it up with the big guys referee Ron Buckner says move the chains fellas first down got it by the nose of the football 7-6 Georgia Southern leads it Appalachian driving here in the second quarter with 6-15 to play Satterfield has his man, Ray Gamma, for a gain of about five yards. Now, Ray Gamma, long way from home. He's a senior from Katy, Texas. That's a suburb of Houston out on the west side. Well, you've seen this offense, Kevin. They're, they're very diversified now. This is not simple. Look at him. Just, he's running a number of different looks at Georgia Southern. It's just a simple little out, but they're mixing it up nicely inside, outside with the run. He'll keep it, and then it come with a pass. And you pick up a long five on first down. So second down and four. Hooks again cuts it back, and Hooks has another Appalachian first down. They're going left, they're going right, running, passing, doing a little bit of everything right now, and keeping Georgia Southern's defense back on their heels. Yeah, they're not really sure how to sit in against them. Uh, when you're pulling, in this case, it's not pulling both guards. It's pulling an onside guard and a backside tackle. You got some angle blocks by your frontside tackle and, and also your center. And it, it, it keeps Georgia's uh, defense at home a little bit so they can't pursue. And then you let Hooks find a little bit of a crack or Smith as he did on that first down conversion, that third down conversion, uh, a few plays back. Again on first down, Hooks on the pitch. Hooks may be a gain of two there. A good job that time. Darius Dawson leading the way for Georgia Southern. Also Davis in on the stop. Nick Davis, senior. 
from Griffin, Georgia. And now Chip Hooks looks like he's banged up a little bit. He'll come out and take a rest. Nate Abraham comes in, junior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Number 27 in the backfield. But on second down and eight from the 33-yard line. Bootleg, Satterfield. It's incomplete. Looking for Jeff Vollmer, the big tight end, the freshman. A little high and outside. You're going to look at a little bit of Satterfield's inexperience. He had Don Blue running free down the field. He chose to go to the tight end first, and maybe he felt the pressure coming, a little bit of that pressure, and decided to unload early. But if he would, could have waited maybe another count, Blue was running free because I think is that Brandon Roselle on that side the uh, number no it's number two for cornerback uh, Francis Williams who Francis. was backing up Roselle yeah Francis came in and it committed to form of the tight end the so third down and long Satterfield has his man complete and out of bounds but a first down Kevin Burton a freshman from Columbia South Carolina picks up 18 yards on a third down and nine where it appears as if Georgia Southern is a little bit slow motion over here. They don't really do anything. They don't pressure Satterfield at all. It allowed him to come right out around the end. He probably could have run farther if he wanted and not real tight coverage on the receiver. Satterfield's got a nice series of downs going for him, throwing and running. Another first down. So from the 16-yard line, this is Chip Hooks down to the 5-yard line. Scott Davis saved the touchdown for Georgia Southern. A gain of 12 yards. Boy, just a major block by Derek Farkas on Edward Thomas, the defensive end for Georgia Southern, number 97. Of course, Farkas uh, has him outweighed probably by 100 and something pounds, but it's just a tremendous block. Good block inside their center and left guard again. Chad LaPen, uh, also Chad Hoover. Yeah, Kevin Farkas, 6'9", 357 pounds. This is Chip Hooks, stuttering inside the five-yard line. He goes down to the three-yard line. Stockton in there on the make the tackle, along with Nick Davis for the Eagles of Georgia Southern. And this is where the Georgia Southern defense has been tough. It's been a bend but not break type of a defense so far last week against Western Carolina and again today against Appalachian. They've only given up the two field goals. Well, being a little bit wide open is what got him here. The field's compressed. I think you want to stay a little bit wide open. So second and goal. Satterfield with blockers in front. Satterfield cuts it up. Touchdown, Appalachian. that time Johnny Smith leading it around that right end gets a great block on Scott Davis and now Appalachian looks like they're going to go for two as they lead it 12 to 7 I believe they are going to go for two well you got to be impressed with Scott Satterfield and keep in mind this young man is only a sophomore from Hillsboro North Carolina that was a magnificent drive, too, for Georgia Southern. The big play on third down and nine that picked up 18 on the pass to Kevin Burton. Now going for two. It's going to be a free play. Satterfield throws in the end zone. It's caught. The two-point conversion is good. Kevin Burton again. And now it's a seven-point ball game at 14-7. to seven. The flag is down, but I believe this is offsides against Georgia Southern. It is. And the fellas in black are pumped up, and so are their fans. Three minutes, 49 seconds to play. A four-yard run by Satterfield. Satterfield's got the option, throw or run. Oh, this is, I'm sorry, this is the touchdown run, and this is, this is just the rollout. Here is the two-point conversion here. Once again, the ball's in Satterfield's hands, and he's pointing to Burton where he wants him. Talk about catching it with your hands, because there was nobody there to catch it with. He just, he was on his backside when he made the catch. The Mountaineers like it. 
as they lead it 14 to 7 on a hazy fall day in Boone, North Carolina. Kevin Burton, who had a, it was really apropos that Satterfield would throw the two point conversion to him because he was really the big play in that drive when they faced that third down and nine. And Appalachian just chewed up big time yardage against the Georgia Southern defense on that last drive. Looks like Georgia Southern has not really taken Burton into effect. He's made a couple of big catches in today's game. It's blue and gamma. Maybe they're concentrating on him a little bit more. But you're right. The difference has been Satterfield. He he's just uh, looks a little bit wise beyond his years. The first three games a little bit of an iffy situation for him. He really shows he's playing with a lot of confidence today. And you know we talked before as you see that scoring drive well orchestrated 14 plays 86 yards taking up five and a half minutes. We talked before this last drive saying that Appalachian needed to do something offensively because they've been quiet since the first half of the first quarter. They've had a couple of uh, really stagnant possessions but they needed that. Yeah, it keeps the momentum in their in their favor, at least keeps the game uh, in balance. If you answer what another team does, Georgia Southern gets a score, you come right back and get another score. Uh, kick it away to Chris Wright. And Wright will let this one bounce through the end zone. Touchback will bring it out to the 20-yard line. So Georgia Southern, who was impressive on their offensive drive the last time they had the football, will send their offensive unit back out onto the field, led by Joe Dupree. If you're just joining us, two field goals in the first quarter for Appalachian. It was Kyler Ferguson good from 22 yards out and good from 31 yards out at the end of the first quarter. Appalachian led it six to nothing. But in the second quarter, the last possession for Georgia Southern, that man right there, Joe Dupree, went 15 yards on a quarterback draw to make it seven to six before the two-point conversion and the touchdown for Appalachian that you just saw. Dupree pitches it back. And cutting it up maybe for a gain of a yard is Terry Lester. He's a freshman from Lithonia, Georgia. So at that time it was strung out extremely well by Appalachian. Penalty marker is down. Brent David made the stop for the Mountaineers. There's the option that they've been running most of the day. Pulling the backside guard. That time Quentin King really plays the shoulder into Joe Dupree. And looks like a face mask on Brent David, their fine middle linebacker. That's a shame as far as Brent David because he was there in position, able to string the play out, but you got to keep your hands out of that face. Really a rule that uh, has come into vogue in the last, oh, five or six years, especially the, the uh, differentiation between, let's say, the official. Huh. So they offset. Well, the one about grabbing the face mask, though, where it can be just casual, where a guy is just throwing his hand to try to make a tackle and, and the flagrant uh, pulling of the face mask. She didn't like the call either. So we offset back to the 20-yard line and play first down all over again with three minutes and 41 seconds to play in the first half. Dupree to throw it for Dawson. And Dawson has it for a gain of four yards. Made the first man miss, but then the posse was on its way, and Brent David was leading the way. And I don't think Brent's disposition was too good at that point after the penalty on the last play. And Dexter Dawson, sophomore from Camilla, Georgia, is still hurt. He's still down. Well, he probably shouldn't have taken it back inside. That's where all the pursuit is coming, both these teams showing good pursuit from their defensive teams. Dexter Dawson been a big play player for Coach Tim Stowers, Georgia Southern Eagles. He averages 23 yards a catch. That's, that's tough to replace, especially when you think about the Georgia Southern really didn't throw the ball that much. When you average 23 yards a reception on an offense that doesn't throw it a whole lot, that's pretty impressive. It's kind of like to think what it would be if they did throw it more. And, uh, Joe Dupree was the one who made that big throw to Dexter Dawson to get their touchdown drive rolling and then followed by the big run out of Joe Dupree. But they've got two fine receivers, Darren Willis on the other side. Team plays without a tight end, though. Finds you the run and shoot. You're part of the country, Houston, and mine over in Atlanta. Not many tight ends in those games. No. So Dawson heads over to the sideline. When with 325, Georgia Southern will go at its second down and six. A 
There you see the no tight end set and the two slot backs. Dupree. Dupree cuts it up, has the first down and run out of bounds. After a gain of 10 yards out to the 35 yard line. Appalachia State had their, looks like Joe Dupree's ankle is really bothering him now. It's starting to get a little bit worse, maybe stiffening up, but Appalachia State's defense was slanting that time to the wide side of the field. Georgia Southern crossed him up, came short side. He put a nice move on Jamie Coleman to get by him. That ankle is it's looking like it's really, really taken away from him right now. So first down and 10 for Georgia Southern. They trail it by seven. This one is complete. Darren Willis and Willis has a gain of eight yards out to the 41 yard line. A little too early for Appalachian to get in a, a bit of a prevent defense here before halftime because you still got a little under t three minutes left in this first half. Well, they know that Georgia Southern's got speed outside with Willis and Dawson. And they've been trying to keep everything underneath uh, for the most part of the day here. When you do that, you really put a lot of pressure on your safeties to react to pass and run. And, and if it is run, uh, to come up and force and make the tackle on this pitch. There you see the story. Dupree to throw it again, being pressured. Dupree's got a lot of room. Let's it go for Dawson, and it's incomplete. Boy, there was a lot of folks open there and a lot of open yardage. Matter of fact, Dawson looks like he could have adjusted to that football any way he wanted to. He was he really wasn't covered. No, Larry Dennis forced Dupree, and I think Joe would like to have that ball back in his hands once he gets a look at it. Here's the early force uh, by Larry Dennis. He pulls Joe Dupree out. Nobody really pressured him. Take your time. Look at, you know, you're, just, you're throwing it like a javelin there almost, Joe. And still not a bad throw, but you've got time to set for just a split second unless that ankle's bothering you too badly and make a good throw. Tough to tell from that angle, the depth perception, but Jamie Coleman was not that close. The man, number 12, that had the coverage. Here's a big gainer for James Williams. But it could be another face mask. A 12-yard pickup. They let the officials sort things out. But if this is another face mask penalty, that would be, what, the third or fourth one we've had today. Everybody's a little bit behind with their tackling. It looked like James, James Williams got really pulled down after he broke uh, a pass to 50 and pulled down by a face mask. This could be a flagrant one. He's been kind of quiet. How many times do you see the fullback in a a uh, option offense taking it wide like that? I mean, that's there's right. a lot of versatility in the way they run what they call their flex bone. I have a 15-yard face mask defense. That's 15 yards from the end of the run. So you check on the 15 yards to the 12-yard 12, uh, 12 run by James Williams. It's a 27-yard pickup for Georgia Southern. Solution to get rid of the face mask penalty, get rid of the face mask. We'll make this game a lot uh, a lot less hitting, probably. Will Robinson was being blocked and uh, really got there late. You see the penalty situation. Dupree. They had a beat on him, but he gets away and completes the pass to Dexter Dawson. And Dupree has been a great freelancer today because he's been in a lot of trouble back there. He's had two people chasing him uh, this time. Williams doesn't get a real clean block on Dexter Coakley, the linebacker who is blitzing. And once again, Larry Dennis comes up empty handed. Number 31, he's not able to, to gather him. Coach Tim Stowers there on the sidelines. Uh, he's got something to say to his of the officials. Something he didn't like. You can see he said called timeout. And that's exactly what he did, was call timeout. With a minute 47 seconds to play in this first half, Appalachian giving everything Georgia Southern wants right now. You can tell it by looking at the scoreboard. They're up 14 to 7. Reed looks pretty good. And what was he saying? You I wasn't that looking. Timeout. I, I was the looking. timeout good. I was, you saw it, too. He said he said they <laughs> call timeout. I was looking at the scoreboard. I would have read the lips for you had you had asked me before. You would want to read lips on that side right there, as that is Ruffin McNeil, the defensive coordinator for Appalachian. Although his defense has played very well this afternoon. We say that in joking and jest here, but uh, that defense has played awfully well today. 
Yeah, it's been a, it's a, a good tight ball game except for the penalties and maybe the turnovers. That's what has an effect, I think, on both teams. Uh, although Georgia Southern was unable to get anything out of that punt turnover by by Appalachian State. Uh, Dupree has thrown two interceptions. I think only one of them meant anything to Appalachian State's offense. The other one uh, might have been negated. And I, coming into this today's game, he'd only thrown one other interception that against Marshall uh, in the in the loss earlier this season, only three in his career. Fine high school quarterback out of Macon, Georgia, transferred from the University of Georgia to Georgia Southern. Dupree again on the quarterback draw, picking and choosing his hole and goes ahead for a gain of 10 yards and another Georgia Southern first down. They've seen that play enough today. That's uh, at least the third time, maybe the fourth that they've gone with that quarterback draw and it's been a very positive play. You can see Franklin Stevens blocking on Mark Ivey, opens up a nice hole. James Williams leading through the hole. Does a great block on Brent David. They're all American linebacker and uh, the results. Here's the misdirection, but snuffed out by Appalachian. Brent David was there. All kind of misdirection. Also, Chad Gore in there to lay a hard hat on the running back, Marlo Warthen. So now it's second down, and you go with the hurry up offense as we count down the 65 seconds to play in the first half. Again, the misdirection. And again, you know what they did, though? What Appalachian did best there as it was Kevin Sikorsky that made the play, but they kept him in bounds and made him burn a timeout. Would, didn't, didn't let him get to the outside. On the other side of that, though, Dupree should have done a better job getting out of bounds. Should have recognized down in distance where he was and taken it out of bounds. He had nothing going for him back inside. So another timeout as Joe Dupree goes over. I think he's saying it right there. My fault. My fault. Coach Stowers is telling him. Hey, why did you get out of bounds for the that timeout? So now 51 seconds to play as the Mountaineers lead it, as you can see, 14 to 7. Here on a cool day in Boone, North Carolina. From what I understand, it could get a lot cooler than this here. You see the people there in their jackets. Temperatures dropping, too, since uh, we came in here earlier this morning. Very pretty setting for a stadium. 18,000, but a nice little uh, bowl stadium, and they play a lot of different sports in here. Use their track and soccer and uh, any number of sports on this, uh, this field. Although I'm not a big proponent of Astro. artificial turf. Artificial turf. That's the politically <laughs> correct way to say it. Well, it was, uh, when I was in college, uh, Tennessee put it in in 1966, and it was called tartan turf at that time. Unbelievable footing. They used to they'd give the visiting teams a shoe that had a little tiny balls on the bottom of them, and the, the footing was just outstanding. And, of course, by the time you finished, you had rug burns all over you because you didn't know you had to cover up every part of your body. So Dupree brings him to the line of scrimmage with 51 seconds left. It's a third down and nine. Dupree set in the pocket. Now he's going to run. He's going to be short of the first down, but he gets out of bounds to stop the clock. And I guess you have to send the field goal unit on now, and Dupree really antsy getting up. You see when the, he is really favoring that left ankle. This time, though, he makes the right decision. It's not there. He doesn't have anything downfield. Blitz is coming. He feels Dexter Coakley on his backside, and he takes off and gets out of bounds, reserves himself for the opportunity for three. A 31-yard attempt from Reed Haley, the junior, from Clearwater, Florida. Out of the hold of Bill Thatcher. Plenty of distance, and he's perfect. So Georgia Southern strikes back with 39 seconds with a nice drive of their own and a 31-yard field goal by Reed Haley. This has been an excellent first half. Well, it's well, well played by both teams. Even with the turnovers, they didn't allow themselves to let the game get out of balance, out of perspective. Uh, they came back against it, and, and uh, you've seen a little bit of everything. Both offenses have opened it up a little bit. Georgia Southern not known as a passing team yet. The three has hit a couple of big passes for them, but Scott Satterfield has uh, just been very impressive uh, all around. I think running, throwing, leading Appalachia State to that 14-10 to lead. 
recapping it for you. Kyler Ferguson with two field goals in the first quarter let gave Appalachian a six to nothing lead. In the second quarter, Georgia Southern got on the board with a Dupree 15 yard run and Appalachian answered right back on the next drive with an 86 yard drive capped off a four yard run by Scott Satterfield. That made it at the time 12 to seven. So they went for two. The pass was complete to Kevin Burton, made it 14 to seven. And there you saw Georgia Southern with that drive as Reed Haley, a 31 yard field goal with 39 seconds left, makes it 14 to 10. Again, Nate Abraham and Dexter Coakley. That's Abraham to the bottom of the screen, back deep. And this will be Coakley. Coakley takes a knee. He was going to tease him for a minute, then he <laughs> took a knee. Now you can tell, how many times, we talked about this earlier, how many times have you seen a linebacker running back kickoffs? He's a sensational athlete. They've had some great linebackers here, too, guys who played in the pros. Dino Hackett was a great linebacker with uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. And, and a, a player here named Cedric Felton who has uh, 500 career tackles. And that's the, what Brent Davis closing in on. And they say that Coakley will certainly surpass that when his career is done. He is an outstanding freshman. 5'11", 190 to play inside. Got just great speed. So 39 seconds left. Satterfield will sit on it. And we'll see if we have to run another play. I want to remind you at halftime, Mark Martin will be down on field side. He'll have some special guests coming to coming by. We'll take a look at both the Georgia Southern and Appalachian bands. That's all coming up here at halftime. Well, I don't know if you run your quarterback, uh, if you're going to run the clock out. Why don't you just run the fullback up the middle and, and let it roll? Don't risk injury to Satterfield right before the half. They get away with it, though. All right, but well they will go to the locker room as the seconds tick away, and a good first half it has been. 14 to 10, Appalachian leads it. Appalachian at one and five, a heavy underdog in this ball game as Georgia Southern leading the conference as they come in at three and one, four and two overall. But Appalachian has done all they've needed to do and some here in this first half and they lead it by a score of 14 to 10. Both quarterbacks have done an excellent job. Satterfield, Scott Satterfield, who has scored on a touchdown from Appalachian, and Joe Dupree from Georgia Southern. Really the guys that have gotten things done. And right now, let's go down onto the field of Mark Martin. He stands by with the Georgia Southern coach, Tim Stowers. Well, the game's really gone about like I thought it would. We've thrown a couple interceptions, and they were missing points. You know, Chip Hoots is a fine running back. They got a good offensive line. They're, they're, they're big and strong. They, they moved on down the field. We just got to make the play in the second half. This is what this is what the Southern College football is all about. Matt Fletcher is not a one in five football team. That might be their record. But, I mean, they are well, very well coached. They got a super tradition. And yeah, Coach Moore is doing a super job. We just got to come out and make the play in the second half. We expect to win. All right, Timmy, good luck in the second half. Thanks. Appreciate all right. it. Tim Stowers, the head coach of Georgia Southern, back upstairs to Kevin and Jeff. All right, thank you, Mark. All right, we are at halftime, 14 to 10. The score here at the end of one. We'll be back for our halftime in just a moment. Every golfer knows the rule. Play the ball. Halftime, it's the homestanding Mountaineers in the lead over the first place team in the Southern Conference. The Eagles of Georgia Southern University. Great football game here at the break. The count is 14 to 10. Welcome back, everybody. Mark Martin with you here at halftime. And Appalachian State with the lead and those all-important first quarter points. They had not scored in the first quarter heading into this game here this afternoon through six games this season. They had failed to score in the first quarter, but they get two Kyler Ferguson field goals, and you can certainly tell a difference in Jerry Moore's football team here in the first half of action. The first field goal from 22 yards out, the second field goal coming from 31 yards out. Georgia Southern, though, would regain the lead with Joe Dupree going in from 15 yards out. The extra point good. That made it 7-6 with 9.22 to go in the first half of action. But then it's Appalachian State coming back. Quarterback Scott Satterfield on a touchdown run. And Jerry Moore and company electing to go for two. Satterfield heading Kevin Burton with the two-point conversion. That made it 14-7. And then the closing second of this first half of action. And Reed Haley with the uh, field goal of 31 yards for Georgia Southern. And that's where we stand here at halftime. 14 to 10. 
good football game here. Beautiful day, although a bit overcast. It's a beautiful time of year here in North Carolina. We will be back with more from Boone, 14-10 at the half. In conference schools, Appalachian State and Georgia Southern and the homestanding Mountaineers with a 14-10 lead here at the break. And joining me here at halftime is the chancellor at Appalachian State University, Dr. Francis Borkowski. And I guess it was uh, May 14th uh, when you uh, officially took over here and becoming the fifth chancellor of this school. And first of all, just talk about your early months on the job. Well, it's been a great place to be. Appalachian State's just a fine university, and I'm more impressed every week with the quality of the faculty and the quality of the students here. We're just delighted to be here. Today. Your views on intercollegiate athletics, what kind of role do you feel plays uh, for the young men and young women who participate and for the university in general? I think intercollegiate athletics plays a, can play a very important role in the lives of young people. Number one, if, uh, it's a matter of preparation and wellness and physically being prepared. The competition, I think, is healthy and good. It's, it's a matter of perspective. I think the Southern Conference is excellent. I think football, basketball, all of the sports are in the right perspective here. The graduation rates are good. And I think the students who take part in athletics come out with an edge that a lot of other students don't. So I really do believe uh, strongly in intercollegiate athletics, and I believe, for that matter, in intramurals just as well. And we have a heavy intramural program here. I think it's a, I think it's just simply a good facet of an undergraduate education. Certainly can't beat an atmosphere like this afternoon, can you? Not at all. This is the way football ought to be played. Let's talk about your background and uh, in, in reading up on your biography. You've done some extensive travel uh, through the years uh, in the field of education. I'll let you elaborate. Well, the travels have all been university related. As we look toward the, uh, the next century and we see all the advances that are being made globally, it's important to have an environment where our young people can come to understand people of diversity and different cultures and races and, and creeds. And usually my travels have taken me to other institutions where I've set up research programs or exchange programs with the university with which I was associated. And we're doing a lot of that here at Appalachian. In fact, I've been very impressed and surprised with the extent of our international work here. Early on, uh, your thoughts on what Appalachian State University offers to a young man or a young woman? Well, unlike many large, comprehensive research universities, Appalachian has a tradition of being student-centered and service-driven. There's a, there's a quality of intimacy here, a quality of closeness, of caring, that uh, many large institutions just don't have. We keep the class sizes modest. Uh, students have easy access to faculty and the staff. And it's just a quality that is very special. Your background certainly heavy in the uh, music field, and you have performed the clarinet and also been a conductor for many symphonies through the years. Uh, your plans here in the Tar Heel State as you make a move uh, uh, in your career, uh, any, any plans at this point for that facet of uh, your life? Well, my debut was in the first football game where I conducted the national anthem, and I hope the progress is a little beyond that. But yeah, I would be, of course, delighted to be able to conduct periodically through the year, and I'm sure opportunities will come about. All right, well, it's great being with you because uh, you're a West Virginia native, and it's always nice that uh, when West Virginia natives can get together. So uh, it was a pleasure talking with you here Thank this you afternoon. Bart. It's nice to have been a mountaineer and to come full circle to be a mountaineer again. Thank All you very much. All right, Dr. Francis Borkowski, the chancellor here at Appalachian State University. At the break, the Mountaineers up 14-10. Our coverage continues in a moment. We welcome you back on the campus of Appalachian State University. We're at the intermission. It is Appalachian State leading Georgia Southern by a count of 14 to 10 in this Southern Conference showdown. And we welcome you back, everybody. Mark Martin with you now joined by Dr. Alan Hauser, who is not only the uh, chairman of the athletic department here at Appalachian State University, you also serve as the Southern Conference president. And uh, you are a busy man. We're going to have to find a few more jobs for you. I think I have quite enough, thank you. <laughs> but there certainly are quite a few that are involved there. I think I've been faculty athletic representative since 1986, and I think one of the things I most enjoy about that is the way both the Southern Conference and Appalachian State University are very, very careful to make our primary objective the academic well-being of our student athletes. We have some very fine athletic teams, as I think you're seeing in this, in this game, but our ultimate goal here is to see that these student athletes get a fine education and I think that's one of the things that, that is, has to be kept at the forefront of, of one's attention, intercollegiate athletics. I'll give you an example. The NCAA every year requires each institution to give a report to them of the graduation rate of their student athletes. 
and to the graduation rate of their overall student body for a particular entering class. In 1987, our overall graduation rate for all of our students five years later was 59%. Our overall graduation rate for our student athletes entering at the same time was 58.5%. So that's about as close, I think, as you can hit it. And I'd emphasize one other thing that goes with it. Students today are taking more than four years to graduate. Uh, that's not something many of us like, but that's the way it is. Our overall student body for that same year took 4.63 years to graduate. Our student athletes took 4.65, which is amazing when you consider all of the extra responsibilities a student athlete has. The Southern Conference uh, nationwide has really gained a lot of attention, a lot of respect, and uh, we talk about athletics, but in the academic field as well, and I, and I know it's just a, a great pleasure to be a part of all that. Oh, it certainly is. We have not only some very fine institutions in the Southern Conference, and I think that Georgia Southern and Davidson, when they joined us recently, were very solid additions to our conference. But I think it's also the case that the Southern Conference has a dual focus on fine athletic teams and academics. And as I see it, that's precisely the way it should be in intercollegiate athletics. And I think in some ways, I don't want to brag too much, but I think the Southern Conference can certainly serve as a model for what the NCAA should be all about. All right, we got a great game going here this afternoon. Two great institutions. Dr. Hauser, thanks for being with us. Well, thank you very much. I've enjoyed talking to you. All right, Dr. Alan Hauser with us here at halftime. It is a 14-10 lead for the Mountaineers over Georgia Southern. We'll return to Boone in just a moment. The Sports of College Football Blitz. Rushing in a Southern Conference match. And we welcome you back to Boone, North Carolina. Mark Martin back on the field with you. Jerry Moore, the head coach of the Mountaineers of Appalachian State, joining me. And Jerry, you have to be pleased with how this first half has gone. We're very pleased because you're playing hard. We've hurt ourselves with some penalties, but we're playing hard. And, and so far, things have been going pretty good. Got those first quarter points, and I know that uh, just seemed to add some fire to this football team. Well, it did, and it was a good 80-yard drive. We needed that. Jerry, good luck here in the second half. Thank you. All right, Jerry Moore, the head coach of the Mountaineers, his team on top, 14-10. We now return you to Kevin and Jeff. All right, thank you, Mark. Let me take a look at some of the highlights from this first half of action. And it was a well-played first half. We first started off as Kyler Ferguson got things off the, uh, got Appalachian off the zero mark as he kicks it through from 22 yards out. And that made the score three to nothing. Then Ferguson again, he will try it from 31 yards out from the right hash mark, knocks it through, and Appalachian led it six to nothing in the first quarter. Then in the second quarter, Georgia Southern comes back 15 yards out on the quarterback on the quarterback draw, and you see Joe Dupree take it in for six. But on the next drive, Scott Satterfield from four yards out, just a naked bootleg rollout, fakes the pitch and takes it in. At that point, it was 14, or excuse me, seven, 12 to seven. So Appalachian decides to go for two. Satterfield finds Kevin Burton. Watch the catch he makes in the back of the end zone. And he hauls it in. And then to cap things off, Reed Haley from 31 yards out with 39 seconds to play. Gets us to 14 to 10. That's where we stand now as you take a look at the first half statistics. And uh, Appalachian really getting things done. Look at the first downs doubling up. Georgia Southern with 12 first downs, only six for Georgia Southern. You see they're getting it done on the ground, in the air. Neither one of these teams is going to throw it a whole lot. Neither team really penalized a whole lot. But that, those numbers right there give you an idea of how much Appalachian has really dominated this first half. Well, with uh, Satterfield rolling out as much as he is, and they've got the Georgia Southern defense spread out. Hooks has done a good job finding some holes, as has Satterfield. And I think one of the things Georgia Southern is worried about is him rolling out and then throwing the football. So we are underway to here we go in the second half. As Coakley moves it up and will get Appalachian pretty good field position out to the 24 yard line. Dexter Coakley a return of 18 yards to get us started here in the second half. 14 to 10 the Mountaineers of Appalachian lead it as Appalachian comes in one in five one and two in Southern Conference play. Their only win over East Tennessee State. Georgia Southern comes in four and two. They are three and one in conference play, losing at Huntington, West Virginia against Marshall a few weeks back. Scott Satterfield, who had an excellent first half, back in under center. And on first down, hands it to the fullback, Chip Hooks, gets outside, and Hooks will go ahead for maybe only three yards on the play, but it was a play that Hooks could have very well have lost to. 
Yeah, Walter Flowers, defensive uh, tackle for Georgia Southern, does a nice job of penetration. You'll see this a lot from this Georgia Southern defensive line. They're not the biggest. They're all about the same size, but they do a good job of getting between blockers and trying to mess something up in the backfield. That time, Walter didn't come up the tackle, though. So second down and seven after the three-yard pickup. Satterfield has his man, Ray Gamma. Gamma knocked out of bounds right at the first down marker. Darius Dawson escorting Ray Gamma out of bounds. Gamma, a senior from Katy, Texas. Just a simple little out pattern. He doesn't quite get to the sticks, and, and that is because of Darius Dawson does a nice job of shadowing him and then knocking him out. Dawson, a an all-star candidate, maybe a national all-star candidate. He's a big play type player for this Georgia Southern Eagles, but Satterfield starts the second half much like he ended the first. A lot of confidence. Well, it's going to be a third down situation coming up by about half the length of a football. Boy, you're in a situation as Appalachia State is. They're leading, and they are not having a real successful season at this point. Uh, this is the time maybe to take the chances like at a third and one, see if they're willing to do it or not. Or do you just want to keep the chains going? The question for Coach Jerry Moore. What would you do? I'd be I, awfully conservative. No, I like to gamble. I, you know, I, I just I think the game should be played uh, as wide open as possible, and and uh, instead of the percentage football. But uh, then again, uh, I'm not coaching. I'm just App Appalachian, a third of their third downs, they were successful. They get the first down. <laughs> they go with the conservative in, move. In the most conservative way. That's somewhere to the right of Mayo Taesung, isn't it? Uh, the quarterback sneak on third in the inches. It's Eli, what does he say? It's a, it's a lot easier to, to air it out when it's somebody else's team <laughs> oh, you're airing yeah. out, right? Yeah, that's, what, that's what it is, I think, when you're talking about football, second guessing and uh, you know, talking about maybe what you think they should do. And Jerry Moore's had a great success here at Appalachia State, not listening to uh, fans nor myself probably. One minute into the second half as they hand it to the first man, and now Johnny Smith, a junior out of Florida, breaks it for a gain of five yards. And that's been something, a trend that has been going on this entire ball game is the fact that Appalachian has been very successful on first down. They've been getting four, five, and six yards on first down. That's what any team wants to do. Any offensive uh, wants to win the battle on first down where you now have the options. Now, what is, which way do you set your defense? Are uh, you going to look for pass? You're going to look for a run? They can keep you guessing. Satterfield will go down, go back, loses five on the play really back to the original line of scrimmage. So it's another big third down coming up. Third down and 10. Georgia Southern's defense was there to make the stop. I'm not sure if Walter Flowers uh, got that sack or Alex Mash, but uh, Michael Morris was not fooled, the defensive end. You can bet that Georgia Southern's defensive coaches have told their ends, Charlie Burke and Michael Morris, not to let him outside on that naked boot. So third down and call it nine from the 37-yard line, Appalachian on the opening drive here in the third quarter. Satterfield open in the flat. Johnny Smith, Johnny Smith, maybe a gain of two, but it'll be punt time for Appalachian. And we will see if Appalachian State, what they will do on this punt, because as we have said earlier, and they've already botched one punt attempt today, it's been an adventure for Will Burkett. He's had five blocks, five punts blocked this season. Georgia Southern has blocked four. Ten men on the line of scrimmage. And here they come. And it's blocked. And it'll be touchdown, Georgia Southern. Clinton Gregory blocked it. And a 34-yard return by Marco Bradham. Unbelievable. He comes, he just comes unscathed off the right side. The snap is perfect. Bentley has had two perfect snaps the last two punts. They've been frozen ropes right back to him. I, I'm not, I don't think he takes exorbitantly long. He's a tall guy, and he, he takes a little time to kick the football, but not to, too much time. It's just that you got to have a block in there. The scheme of blocking is not real clean and strong. And so now Georgia Southern 
on top 17 to 14. 12 minutes even to play in the third quarter. When we come back, Appalachian will have it back, trailing by three. Parties, are you ready for some real food? South Carolina, smiling faces, beautiful places. And U.S. Air, the official airline of the Southern Conference. U.S. Air begins with you. 17-14, Georgia Southern leads it. And for the sixth time this season, Appalachian has had a punt blocked, and for the fifth time this season, Georgia Southern has blocked one. Last week it led to a safety for Georgia Southern in a game that they won by only one point. So right now it's put them up by three. So it's, it really is amazing that a team could have that many punts blocked. You're not going to win many games, and your special teams are not solid, and uh, this punting situation has been disastrous this year for Appalachian State. And Certainly uh, in this first half and the second half. Now you see they've got 10 men on the line of scrimmage and Clinton Gregory with the great extension wasn't even close. Marco Bradham picks it up and scores after he runs it in for 19 yards. He came inside too. It wasn't like he came uh, from all the way around the end to block. He came inside somewhere. So an even 12 minutes on the clock. Appalachian with the football. Chip Hooks cuts it up for a gain of five yards. Now let's go down on the sideline. Mark Martin has a guest standing by. All right, thank you very much, Kevin. I'm joined by Dr. Bucky Wagner, the athletic director at Georgia Southern University. And Bucky, I always like to talk with you about the, the beginning of this football program at Georgia Southern. What great success, but uh, kind of mind-boggling that it all began just back in 1982. Well, we just have had a lot of great help in South Georgia. And of course, we had Eric Russell with just a just brought us immediate credibility and and uh, just everybody in South Georgia got behind us. We got a lot of good players down there and and we've had a lot of fun with the football program. How important is it for a one double a football program to play a one a school uh, Marshall of course played North Carolina State earlier today early this season. You guys played Miami and made a very good showing for yourself. Well we love it. I mean our kids really like the chance to go down and play in the Orange Bowl. Our fans love to just see how we're going to play against these folks and, and we like to do it at least once a year. Just uh, you know, just for our fans and our players and, and uh, it's just uh, it's an extra treat for them and, and uh, yeah, it's just you can't say anything more than that. First year in the Southern Conference and so far I know everyone's enjoying it. Well as long as we keep going in this game and they just fumbled. And I hope we got it, and we'll really enjoy it. All right, Bucky, good seeing you. Okay, thank you. All right, Dr. Bucky Wagner, the athletic director of Georgia Southern, back upstairs to Kevin and Jeff. And the Eagles do have it. Darian Dawson recovers the fumble, but what a hit by Rob Stockton. Watch 14 come into the picture. Here you see him, the safety really comes up and lowers the boom on Scott Satterfield. Alex Mash coming inside out, too. Nowhere for Scott Satterfield to go. Well defensed that time by Georgia Southern. It's amazing that Satterfield was able to get up from this one. He took it right under the chin. Stockton had a big interception last week. It led to that win over Western Carolina. Misdirection. Dupree throws out in the flat. And boy, I tell you what, I don't know if Dupree turned his ankle over on that play, but he could barely move on that play. We'll see if Charles Bostic comes out. Here comes the training staff, and I'm sure we will see Charles Bostic. He's been fighting that since early in the first quarter and especially difficult moving to his left as a quarterback. Well, but you see, nobody ever touched him. So they're going to go over and they'll check on Joe Dupree. But in Boone, North Carolina, we've got a score, 17-14. Georgia Southern leads it. Don't go away. Good, good, good football game. Sports South's College Football Blitz features the ACC Game of the Week. Dancing here in Boone, North Carolina, the Mountaineer and the Eagles. With 10.46 to go in the third quarter, you see the count. Georgia Southern leading it 17 to 14. Joe Dupree has gone off the field, but really Tim Stowers has a luxury because he can bring Charles Bostic in, very well-respected quarterback. Very similar type quarterbacks. He's 10 and 7 as a starter, two years for Georgia Southern, and beaten out by Joe Dupree in the spring. It looks like as Bostic gets big yardage, down to the 15-yard line. Almost looked like Charles Bostic and Joe Dupree just changed jerseys because they play exactly the same. A gain of 16 yards. Jamie Coleman made the stop for Appalachian. 
Well, it's a tough turnover for Appalachian State uh, and a good turnover for Georgia Southern. They've capitalized on special teams, and this is a play they feature today. The lead block coming in on Brent David and Charles Bostic just slipping up the middle. They've run this play four or five times with great success. First man, James Williams, and Williams down to the 10 yard line. Muscles his way for a gain of five yards. You know, a lot of option teams just run zone blocking. That's man on man or scoop blocking between two guys that alongside each other, guard a tackle or a guard in the center. Georgia Southern does a lot of intricate things with their offensive line. They pull onside linemen, they pull backside linemen, they trap with it, they fold block between the center and a the guard. They, they make it look a little bit different. It's a very varied looking offense rather than just the wishbone as, uh, as people remember it when it first came out under Henry Ballard. Now Georgia Southern wants a timeout. A new quarterback in, Charles Bostic, wasn't quite sure of what he wanted to do, so he'll go over and talk it over. We'll step out with 9.35 to go, 17-14. There's a little Mountaineer. Right now her team is down 17 to 14 with nine and a half minutes to play here in Boone, North Carolina. We're in the third quarter. And Georgia Southern with a second down and five from the 15 yard line. Charles Bostic has come in, the junior from Thomasville, Georgia. Six foot, 192 pounds. There you see the numbers only Thrown the ball seven times this year, but he will try it here. Cuts it up at the five, at the goal line. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Bostic comes in and lights a fire under this Eagle offense. And we've got a new score, 23 to 14. Well, you hear you see Charles Bostic, he's looking like he's going to pass, but it's a run. Great blocking here. Excuse me, James Williams, Isaac Farrell, number 70. This is a run all the way, I think, after a period of time. They're picking somebody out and blocking. Isaac Farrell on Jamie Coleman and James Williams leading up the through the hole to create a nice hole for Charles Boston. And Reed Haley kicks it through. So 9.29 to play in the third quarter. We have got a new score, 24 to 14. Georgia Southern by 10. Now this is another one of those times when Appalachian really uh, gut check time. They need to come back and, and put together a drive here. Well, the, the uh, block punt and then the fumble back to back on your first two offensive series. You really haven't had a chance to establish very much in the second half after uh, playing a very solid first half. The important thing is to not let a game get out of perspective and not do something that maybe right now would jeopardize you. I like it when they would have gone third and one. Not right, not right now. I think you got to be a little bit more cautious and conservative. Here you see Charles Bostic again. Isaac Farrell pulling in front of him, and he sees sees it and goes right for the goal line. Nice job of running because Appalachia State had three or four people over there led by Bender. That's the third quarterback uh, touchdown today. As Satterfield has run for one, and uh, Dupree has run for one. Now Charles Bostic gets in the running mode for the quarterbacks. Bostic takes in from 15 yards out. Now this one back through the back of the end zone. Let's go down field side to Mark Martin. Mark. All right, thank you very much, Kevin. I'm joined by Charlie Lyle, the associate commissioner of the Southern Conference. We've got a pretty good football game going here right now, the upper hand going to Georgia Southern. Well, it was a very good football game in the beginning, uh, first half and into the third quarter. and. Uh, App State has had uh, five punt block prior to this ball game and then had one block for a touchdown. Uh, kind of changed things a little bit. You spent a lot of time coaching Charlie, so you know about games like this, well, don't you? Well, yeah, I did. I, I, and I know that everything being relatively equal, the kicking game can kill you if you're not careful. And that's 
It, it appears that that was the thing that turned the tide here on App State today. You've been on board with Wright Waters and Company now for uh, several months, and uh, it's been a very busy time. And uh, we were talking before the game, uh, big promotions uh, program going right now for the Southern Conference that you're heavily involved in. Yeah, the Southern Conference is, is like all the conferences in the country. We, you know, you either move forward or, or you go backwards. And through the leadership of Wright Waters and and the very good people that we have in the office of the Southern Conference, uh, the Southern Conference will not stand still. It will move forward and and get better and better and better uh, in Division One AA football and all other sports, as a matter of fact. All right. Certainly, it has been a great addition with Georgia Southern joining this league. No question. They have, they've won four national championships. They were a tremendous addition to the Southern Conference, and we're excited about having them. All right, Charlie, great seeing you as always, and uh, enjoy the rest of the game. Thank you very much. All right, Charlie Lyle, the Associate Commissioner of the Southern Conference, back to Kevin and Jeff. Charlie Lyle, I love that tie. <laughs> Got the Tabasco tie. Third down and five. Big third down for Appalachian. Satterfield rolling the pocket. Throwing across, and it's incomplete. Well, Jeff Vollmer had a chance at it, but Darius Dawson just separated him from the football. And yeah, once again, Satterfield does a nice job of getting out here. This is tough to do. Everybody will tell you, right-handed quarterback rolling to his left. He's trying to wave people down. He's got Vollmer right there. Now's the time to plant, maybe, and, and I keep running. Just plant and sit and fire and deliver the ball. Here we go again, Will Burkett. you got to be, and now we don't have enough people on the field. As Appalachian runs another guy out onto the field. Burkett did a good job saying, hey, don't snap it yet. We only got 10 on the offensive line. This time, Georgia Southern will play back for the return. Here comes Dawson, and Dawson is stuck as he gets the football. I think it was Coakley down on the coverage for Appalachian, but uh, Dawson never got a chance to get anything going. It was a punt of 49 yards and only a return of seven. So 7.56 to play in the third quarter. Georgia Southern leads it by 10. Appalachian defense needs to stop here. And the Appalachian defense has done a good job today. It's just been a matter of uh, the special teams have really been so much to the advantage of Georgia Southern that uh, the defense for Appalachian on a couple drives just didn't stand a chance. That and the fact in the first half, uh, the, the two interceptions, uh, they only got three points out of them. They, the two big turnovers that they got from Georgia Southern. Bostic eludes one man went ahead for a gain of three yards another one of those plays Dexter Coakley makes the tackle a freshman from Mount Pleasant South Carolina only a gain of three but Dawson could very well have lost three on the play as well should have been a loss Mark I Ivy in the backfield uh, right at the get-go right standing there looking at Charles Bostic and uh, just doesn't make the play and you'll hear that more and more it, it's like a buzzword anymore among coaches players making plays make a play you that's the only thing that they're looking for now out of athletes is, is guys who will make plays offensively, defensively. Second down. Bostic again on the option. And Bostic maybe a gain of one there. And guess who? Dexter Coakley. Well, let's go down onto the field. Mark Martin stands by. Kevin and Jeff, uh, it is still Bostic in there, quarterback for Georgia Southern. And the word on Joe Dupree right now is strained ligaments in his right knee. Took a shot right before the half, and they were working on him at halftime and then uh, came up limp there again here in this third quarter. So they're going to keep him out right now, and they'll have uh, no more a little bit later on. But right now, Charles Bostic is the man for Georgia Southern. Back upstairs. Well, you're right about that. Whenever uh, you see a guy putting ice on something, that usually means he's it's going to be hard to come back in once they once you put the ice on it it's uh, it's going to stiffen up a little bit in this weather especially this temperature has dropped uh, quite dramatically since we came here earlier today i think they want to save him a little bit too bostic's doing a good job for him right now on third down and five bostic rolling the pocket looks to run bostic will be very close to a first down this is going to depend on a spot i think he's got the first and you know when you get bostic out there you've got to keep him honest as far as playing the the uh, pass defense, but I mean, he's a guy that you're just about sure that he's going to run the ball. He's only thrown it seven times all season. Well, they've had great quarterbacks in the past. You're looking at Charles Bostic in here. He's he's making them honor. He gets a great block from James Williams on D. Bernard, D. Bernard Dino and uh, uh, is able to get it out of bounds. But in the past, with fellows like Tracy Ham, Raymond Gross, uh, 
pulling the uh, the quarterback spot for this offense. This is the kind of people they're looking for to, to run this offense. It's not as simple as the old wishbone. Bostic again on first down, first man, nowhere to go. James Williams ran right in. I think it was Sikorsky and Mark Ivy. Ivy got to him first. Sophomore from Collinsville, Virginia. And Sikorsky, senior, finished him off along with Brent David. Sikorsky, a refined football player for Appalachian State with second team of preseason all Southern Conference defense, a senior here and has played with Rico Mack and uh, Avery Hall. I think some other great players they've had on defense that have graduated. Makes a difference a little bit. He's now playing with a much younger defensive lineman, but uh, the leader on this defensive line. Bostic on the keeper will lose five, but just like that, the face mask, Appalachian makes the play. But on the other hand, they don't make the play. Joe DiBernardo. Got a hand on the face mask after the loss of five. And a long third down coming up, or maybe it was Sikorsky that got a hand in there. Yeah, Sikorsky's out there shaking his head. And listen, it wasn't me. It wasn't intentional. It was just an accident. It was only there for a second. He said, we're only going to walk it off five yards. <laughs> this, this, is, this is tough. He makes a nice read, a nice play, and he just gets his hand up around there. And as he's falling and other guys are pushing him, it, it catches. Charles Bostic's face mask. Yard, face mask, get the defense, five yard previous spot. So instead of going into a third down and 10 situation, Georgia Southern will have it second down and five. That's a big play right there. So second down, five yards to go for the first. Bostic. Wants to throw it downfield, looking for Dawson, and it's incomplete. Good coverage, step for step, by Jamie Coleman, the sophomore out of Laurenburg, North Carolina. And nice job by the officials, too, not to uh, give an interference call on something like that. They bumped, Jamie Coleman bumped, but maybe it was Dexter Dawson who made the move uh, more up the field and, and impeded uh, Jamie Coleman's uh, route there. And incidental contact, no call. It really didn't affect the pattern on either either side. Ball overthrown, well overthrown. So now a third down. Long five, call it third down and six for the first down. Officials want to get something straight. Oh, now they're going to go back and huddle up again. You think? Dexter Dawson is saying, come on, we've already called the play one time. You may, this gives you the idea that Dexter Dawson's going to get the football. He says, don't change the play in the huddle again. Bostic rolling the pocket left. Brent David is there for Appalachian. Well, that's a guy that just makes plays, like you said, from High Point, North Carolina. Well, he's been a little bit quiet this second half. We haven't seen it, but he runs by Joy Cushing's block. James Williams turns late. He's got some quicks. He flashes as a linebacker and sideline to sideline. Real fine football player. There's Don Blue back deep to receive the punt. High hanger and Blue will call for a fair catch and make it at the 14-yard line. So 86 yards away is where Appalachian will send their offense out onto the field after the 40-yard punt and fair catch by Don Blue. They're going to have to get some things going here. Four minutes, 45 seconds to play in the third quarter. They trail it by 10 as Georgia Southern leads it 24 to 14. Bostic has done a good job on the Georgia Southern side. Really, uh, Dupree goes out. Georgia Southern hasn't missed a beat. Yeah, they're looking for that quarterback rollout, but uh, we haven't seen hooks get wide lately. Okay, here's Scott Satterfield and company on first down. This is the first man through. Johnny Smith, and Johnny Smith finds the going easy as he gets ahead for a gain of seven yards. Check it. It wasn't Johnny Smith. It was Damon Scott, freshman from Cedar Grove, North Carolina, on his first play of the game. Damon Scott showed a little burst there, didn't he? I think if you look at this Appalachian State team, you got to remember that there's 17 freshmen on their two deep roster, and I believe those are all true freshmen, so they're playing a lot of young people. 
Second down and four. This is Chip Hooks. And Hooks gets out close to first down yardage. He needed four. The line to make was the 25-yard line as we count down to four minutes to play in the third quarter. With Jeff Van Note, I'm Kevin Eschenfelder. Glad you could be with us this afternoon on Sports South. Mark Martin handling things down on the sideline. And officials time out as they're going to bring in the chains and check it. 24 to 14, Georgia Southern leads the Mountaineers of Appalachian State. Stretch him out and give him the first down, says Ron Buckner, the referee. And still a lot of time left for Appalachian State. Uh, they don't need to, they only need three really on a drive, you, or else at least establish field position as their defense stiffened last time. But do not do anything to get too far out of character. First man again, Damon Scott. Well, I didn't exactly mean that. <laughs> you got a little conservative there, Coach. Meaning Jeff Van Note, not talking about Jerry Moore, would never question that. It's been tough running up in the middle uh, for the most part today. They had a little flash with Damon Scott there in that first play, but not a lot of room. Well, immediately following today's game, Tennessee Chattanooga takes on VMI. That one should be a good one as more college football continues on Sports South. Southern Conference style. Chip Hooks was headed north and uh, took a quick detour south thanks to the defense of Georgia Southern. Alex Mash led the way for Georgia Southern. Also Michael Morris in on that play for the Eagles. And now a third down situation coming up. Distinct uh, change in style of the offense from the first half when Appalachia State was pulling their guards, pulling their backside tackle, getting some angles and, and trying to go wide and let their backs look for a little bit of a, a seam. Right now they've been just trying to run between the tackles without success. Big third down coming up. Chip Hooks. And Hooks not even close to the first down and a great defensive play by Scott Davis, a junior from Powder Springs, Georgia. Well, Chip Hooks does a, a nice job of, of catching this pass and you have to feel that Satterfield was intending to go all the way, but he never gives himself a chance to make a move. Doesn't seem like he gathers himself to make a good enough move on, on Davis. So they'll give credit to Davis. He just stayed in place. Will Burkett to kick it away. Here comes Georgia Southern again, and he just gets it away. He's going to get a great roll. This is going to be an outstanding punt as it goes inside the 10 to the 6-yard line. A 79-yard punt. That's how slim a margin it is between success and disaster. He does a good job, though, of pulling that ball down. That's a high snap there. And he, he gets it off. It's a line driver, but a line drive spiral. Look at this high. He jumps. Nice, nice job of pulling it down and getting rid of the ball. Got rid of it in a hurry, and I correct myself. It was a 68-yard punt. At the real uh, key is the fact that it's back on the five-yard line. And now the field position, which in this entire second half has been all played in Appalachian State's part of the field. Finally, they get it down on the other end, and Georgia Southern has to work from the shadow of their own goalpost. And Bostic will be the man working with it as he gets it out near the 10-yard line. The one thing about it, when your quarterbacks are as active as Georgia Southerns are right now, they take a beating. Yeah, they've got to be a, a fairly tough individual. Uh, they're they're going to carry the ball a lot. And if you notice when you read the Georgia Southern statistics about their quarterbacks, uh, they talk about their rushing yardage. So much minus yardage. And these aren't sacks from passes. These are are tackles for losses as they run this option a lot of times. So it takes a lot out of them, both physically and, and certainly a lot away from some of the stats they've got. This time they hand it off to James Williams. And Williams plows ahead for a couple more. It's going to bring up another third down situation. Georgia Southern playing it close to the vest, deep in their own territory. There's a guy who's had a rough afternoon, let me tell you. Will Burkett. The 68-yard punt was his career long, but he was, oh, inches away from uh, having his second block punt, or 
second punt block today. It's got to be a very smooth operation. Uh, the snap, uh, the catch, uh, the punt, but also timed up with the blocking and, and recognition by the, the blocking front what's going on. Big third down. Third down and four. Bostic will be short. Appalachian defense has held. William Peebles, the junior from Raleigh, North Carolina, in to make the stop, and Georgia Southern will have to punt it away. Here you can see William Peebles coming from behind, but it's Dexter Coakley, the young linebacker on the front side, that, that's there to play the option pitch, play the quarterback, making the tackle. Well, we are through three quarters. Stay with us. We've got a 10-point ball game. We'll be back to Boone for the fourth quarter in just a moment. Ten-point ball game is a fresh 15 on the clock for the fourth quarter of play. Georgia Southern leads it by 10, but Appalachian's defense has been outstanding here in this third quarter. Sure, you feel the momentum shift with the punt block and then the fumble recovery and then the, and, and jumping out 10 points ahead, and then Appalachian State makes two nice defensive stands. And should get it back in good field position here. Don Blue from the 43-yard line. Don Blue inside. Eagle territory down to the 46-yard line. And for the first time in a while, Appalachian has a positive play, a 13-yard return, and no flags. They have had some good plays, but penalties have hurt them here in this second half. Mark Martin stands by on the sideline. Guys, there is a drainage ditch located next to Georgia Southern's practice facility in Statesboro that the legendary Irk Russell labeled Beautiful Eagle Creek. Now, a road game ritual is to bottle some water from that ditch and bring it on the road with them and then the Friday practice before the game they take the water and they sprinkle it from one end of the field to the other so that's what they did last night here at Kid Brewer Stadium and they say it is to bring them good luck well right now luck uh, seems to be on their side but there's still one quarter of football to be played here in Appalachian State University's home field back upstairs so I don't know how long they've been doing that but if they've been doing it long it's been very successful four national championships since Georgia Southern revived their program in 1982. They have won 76% of their games. That's amazing. I think some of that playing and coaching helped a lot too other than just that water. Satterfield completes it to Kevin Burton. And Burton has it for the first down. There you go. That's not, that's not very conservative on a second down and two. You could go ahead and go for the first down, but they aired it out. Kevin Burton made the catch. Nice. Nice job by Satterfield. He's been doing this all day, either the naked boot. Here he gets a little bit of a play, razzle-dazzle, reverse, and hides the ball. But look at Mike. He knows Michael Morris is going to right behind him, and he's got to find somebody. But Kev, look at Kevin Burton now down here, though. One foot, one foot. He makes sure that that one foot drags in and then reaches out to grab the ball. Great reception. He's had a couple big ones today for him. Appalachian on the move. Chip hooks. Plows inside the 20-yard line. A gain of four yards. For the big guy, Chip Hooks, 5'7", 155 pounds. I say the big, the big guy. guy. <laughs> He's big to this ball club, to this offensive team, but only at 5'7", but he plays with a lot of heart. From Decatur, Georgia. Where well, they're still running between the tackles this half. Uh, Georgia Southern has probably widened out their ends a little bit, but the Appalachia State has kept it between the tackles with a running attack. Satterfield to throw complete, Don Blue. Blue turns the corner at the 10. He's out of bounds at the three-yard line. Folks, that was all Don Blue. A gain of 16 yards on a simple crossing pattern. Blue's been a little bit quiet today, but it's just a short drop, three-step drop. He's looking for Blue all the way underneath, and then Blue does it all himself. Runs away from Paul Carroll. Runs away from Brandon Roselle here. Finally, Brandon catches up with him down here. Nice effort by Don Blue. So Appalachia knocking on the door. Full house backfield from the three-yard line. Hooks gets outside. He'll talk to him as they cross the goal line. Chip Hooks from three yards out as the cannon sounds and we have got a four-point ball game
tight goal line. They fired their corner, Francis Williams. He doesn't come up with the play. Number two, he fires in here and he's just caught inside, does not come up with the play. Hooks is able to get it outside. The PAT is perfect. And we have got a new score in Boone, North Carolina. With 12.53 to play, our score, Georgia Southern 24, Appalachian 21. We'll be back with more in just a moment. We, oh, they're going to need those umbrellas if Appalachian scores anymore with the way that cannon rocks this place. It's going to it's going to send the uh, reverberate. Yeah, the clouds will be uh, letting loose with some rain. We're back deep is Chris Wright. As Appalachian's defense really can get a lot of credit for that last score because uh, defense and a fortunate punt that went for 68 yards. Appalachian is Appalachian State has really shown what they can do if they don't have to use their special teams. The last time though, on the punt return by Don Blue, that really set that play up. Yeah, you got to use every part of your football team and in every part of the game. Field position is a big part of the game, and Appalachia State did that with their defense, with the punt, with the punt return, and then a couple of big plays from Satterfield to Blue. Chris Wright, three yards deep, takes a knee. So they bring it out to the 20 yard line. And watch as Chip Hooks goes around in, and he will talk to them from there. He knew nobody was going to catch him. At five yard for five plays, 43 yards. The big play, though, really, not only was it Don Blue's punt return to set that thing up, but a 13-yard pass that Don Blue took down to the three-yard line. And now Charles Bostic, the junior from Thomasville, back out, and he hands this one off to Marlo Warthen. And Warthen had good running room, where finally runs into his own man, Darren Willis. And he and Willis both go down after a gain of about nine yards. Will Robinson will get credit for the tackle. Check it, it's about a seven yard gain. It's second down and three coming up. Counterplay off of the option. He's even out in front of Jamie Glover, the pull in tackle, but he runs over Matt Stevens. And uh, a nice job of bringing him down, or he would still be rambling. Second down, I think we may have a third down and short coming up. It was a second down and short, but I'm not sure. Sikorsky was there along with William Peebles to stop the ball carrier, James Williams. We'll see. Another young right tackle, the young offensive tackle for Georgia Southern, the freshman, Jamie Glover, doesn't get the seal block on the backside on Peebles. Well, this is a huge play. Fans are on their feet. Third down and one is coming up for Georgia Southern. The defense is encouraging them. Charles Bostic has been in this situation before. I don't know if he has it. No, I don't Terry so. Lester got the call. Brent David was standing in the hole, and we will see. I don't believe he got it. Uh, the referee has his fist in the air as if to indicate fourth down, and he does. They won't even bring the sticks out. Well, here's an Appalachian State team that was giving up 40% on third down conversions coming into this game, and three nice defensive stands. Bill Thatcher will kick it away. He's a senior from Statesboro. Thatcher gets away a beauty, taken by Don Blue at the 25-yard line, and Blue will lose three on the return. Good coverage downfield for Georgia Southern. A 55-yard punt down for Georgia Southern was Travis Taylor. We'll take a timeout. Back to Boone in just a moment. Chuck, the Mountaineers, try to withstand the attack of the thundering herd. Live next Saturday on Sports South. Now we have got a good one here in Boone, North Carolina. 24-21, a little bit closer, I'm sure, than uh, Tim Stowers would like. But Jerry Moore says it's just fine with him.
hooks ahead for a gain of a couple. Give him three. Second down and seven is coming up. Boy, it's so important for Appalachian State to not make any negative plays here. Just to keep it positive. A lot of time left in this ball game. Just down three. Uh, overtime procedure in the Southern Conference. Uh, they just have to keep field position. Not lose field position at Georgia Southern, which they gained earlier. Second down, Satterfield will go down. Back at the 20-yard line. Big number 99, Alex Mash, big senior from Thomasville, Georgia. And we're going to keep him quiet all day long. Chad Groover, the, the center. Alex Mash comes outside him and then comes back inside him, swims underneath him inside. A quick move on some fan protection by that offensive line of Appalachian State. That's his second sack today. I think he's going to get credited for one in the first half. Nine on the season. Well, the best thing that Appalachian could have come out of that was the fact that it was a quick two-step drop, and they couldn't have lost a whole lot of yardage on it. But now Satterfield will take a timeout, and we will step out with him. A timeout on the field. The timeout in Boone. 9.26 to play. 24-21 is our score. Up, the Mountaineers try to withstand the attack of the thundering herd. Live next Saturday on Sports South. Big guys up front, Alex Mash and Walter Flowers getting it done for Georgia Southern as they lead it 24-21 on a cool evening here in Boone, North Carolina. Third down and 10. Satterfield throws complete to Gamma out at the 40-yard line. Now he fumbles it. Here comes Darian Dawson. And Dawson will run it back with a huge play for Georgia Southern. Gamma just flat had the ball stripped from him. It was a gain of 19. And Darius Dawson picked up the football and ran it back six yards. Let's see if we can see what happened. Well, they took that time out to discuss the play they wanted. And a little fake maybe holds the linebackers. But Gamma's got a lot of room between the safeties and the linebackers. Dawson ends up with it, but it was whoever tackled him. Uh, was that uh, Hitson? Yeah, oh, Hitson was the one Alton, that stripped him. Alton Hitson, who makes the tackle and the pull out of the ball. So down to the 30-yard line. So important not to have a negative play, and yet here you have a positive play. A big first down, and, and then the turnover occurs. We're under nine minutes to go, and officials time out. Stop the clock. I don't think Appalachian called a timeout, did they? No, Kenny Bright, uh, the uh, oh, okay. cornerback, was injured. Very nice block put on him. A low block. And uh, by Marlo Warfin and he's limping off the field a little bit. Well, that's a huge turnover. This Jerry Moore's team has played very hard today. Tim Stowers' team comes in. Decided favorites, but they've had their hands full. It's Georgia Southern leads at 24 21. Bostic on the option. Bostic turns the corner to the 25 to the 24 yard line. Big gainer on second down, and a huge third down is coming up for Georgia Southern. You talk about quick, choppy feet a running back has, or a quarterback in this case, because that's what Bostic is. He was able to chop those feet right out from the grasp of Sikorsky. Look at that score. Tennessee leading the tie 17 to 9. And there's a first down run on the big third down, down near the 20 yard line. James Williams, a senior, 200 pounds. He's only five foot nine. That'll be enough for an eagle first down. They'll move the sticks. That could make Auburn maybe the only undefeated team in the Southeastern Conference at this stage. Auburn can't win it. That's right. He's done a great job this year. So 22-yard line. We've got a great ball game going here. They hand it off quick hitter, James Williams, down to the 15-yard line. If 
pick up seven on first down. Boy, it really widens your scope of play calling, doesn't it, when you get down into a second down and two, second down and three, that type of situation. And where they ended up with field position. This defense had uh, played so well in the, the previous three series and now finds itself rocked back after that, uh, that, uh, that uh, fumble recovery. James Williams just right at the gut again. Larry Dennis, Jr. from Palatine, Illinois, was the first Appalachian State Mountaineer to get to him. We'll see where they mark the football. It's going to be another third down situation coming up. And now Georgia Southern, really, you can uh, you look up at the clock, and all of a sudden you look over there, and there's only six and a half minutes to left to play in this game. Georgia Southern trying to eat up some time right now and take advantage of this turnover. Tim Stowers got a feel, though, that maybe three points is not enough. Third down and two. Crowd on their feet. Bostic loses his. We'll see if he's close to the first down. No question he's close. We'll see if he got it. It's all in the mark. All where they figure the ball was when he touched. Because he was sideways. They're also in a position here where it will be fourth down. Now are they going to send? They will send the field goal unit on. See Bostic see tripped up. There's Sikorsky again. They've been trying to trap him with Isaac Farrell, the right guard pulling, and uh, Sikorsky missed him in that early first down on that series. That time he was able to get him. Haley from 30 yards out. Reed Haley, plenty of distance, and Reed Haley splits the uprights and makes this one a six-point ball game with five minutes and 43 seconds to play. And once again, Georgia Southern this time taking advantage of a Mountaineer mistake. That time it was a matter of Gamma completing their Gamma making the catch for the Mountaineers of Appalachian State on a, on a long third down. He had the first down yardage. Then he was stripped of the football. Darius Dawson ran it back and uh, set up this uh, set up Georgia Southern now Appalachian's off defense has been playing very well the entire ball game but you can only ask so much of the defense yeah, App State has done a magnificent job this second half after that block punt falling down seven seven there and then three more after the fumble recovery and going going behind ten uh, they've really uh, both their backs and done a pretty good job of, of keeping that Georgia Southern offense away from their goal line saving three here and giving themselves one more chance here uh, it, well, maybe even two chances with 543, depending on how, how the timing goes. 543, six points behind. They've given their team at least one chance to win this football game. Jerry Moore's team, one in five. Looking for their second conference win. See the drive. They didn't have to go far. It took seven plays. When you see, when you go 20 yards, only 20 yards, and it takes you seven plays, you know you run a lot of time off the clock, and they did 327 off the clock. We're down to 545 to play, as Appalachian better get on the football, and they do. I'll tell you what, Dexter Coakley is probably going to get talked to when he comes <laughs> back over the sideline. It was Dexter, my man, whether it's in the end zone or not, it's a free football, right? That's the second time he's uh, turned away from the football. Somebody else got over and, and down it for him. But what do you expect? He's a linebacker <laughs> most of the day, a starting linebacker. And, and they've got him returning kickoff. He can fly. So Appalachian with 543 on the clock will take it from the 20-yard line. They start 80 yards away with Chip Hooks, the tailback, Johnny Smith, the fullback, and Scott Satterfield under center. Play action. Satterfield is dropped for a two yard loss. Alex Mash, the senior from Thomasville, Georgia. We said we, he's been quiet all afternoon, but when it comes down to crunch time, the monster Mash has been there. Yeah, a quiet three sacks uh, that he has today in uh, the early game against Citadel. It was Alex Mash, Southern Conference Defensive Player of the Week, with three sacks. Very, this is a chance, I think, when you see Satterfield play a little bit more, get some more experience, he'll learn to dump that ball or try to get outside a little bit quicker and get out of bounds. Crossing the five-minute mark, Satterfield is going to look for Gamma, and it is incomplete. Gamma just couldn't hold on, and now a third down and 12 coming up for the Mountaineers of Appalachian State. Well, you got to like this young quarterback, though. He's 
He's showing a lot of nerve. I mean, he, and, and moving to his left a lot today. He's been, that's counter to uh, what a right-hander does. But you see him wave Gamma there. I think if Gamma would have followed it a little more, he wanted him more towards the sidelines. He wouldn't have had to throw it to, uh, so low, maybe. Maybe he could have gotten him to, to lead it more towards the out-of-bounds. Third down, 12. Satterfield. And it's incomplete, intended for Gamma. And Appalachian State will have to punt it away with 4.45 to play here in the ball game. Might not have had enough time, felt a little bit of the heat coming from Morris, and, and it might have unloaded that before he was ready because the pattern was breaking open. Well, Jerry Moore is going to call on his defense one more time. And Burkett punts it away. Look out. Knocked out of bounds at the 42-yard line was Brandon Rosell. Rosell with an excellent return of 15 yards, and Georgia Southern again gets good field position to start off this drive, and now it's going to be a matter of handing it off to the big guy and letting him run a little time off the clock. Watch Brandon Rosell bounce to the outside, doesn't quit on it, retains his, his balance, and finally gets knocked out of bounds. Well, here where the clock becomes Georgia Southern's ally right here with 432 in great field position. You're going to see a lot of that right there. Hand off to the big guy, and he's down to the 12-yard line. A gain of 30 yards for James Williams. You would have thought Appalachian State would have been looking for the fullback right up the middle trying to run some time off the clock. Franklin gets a nice block on uh, Ivy. And there's a big hole up the middle. Brent David is taking himself out. To, he's playing outside option and, and uh, not covering the middle that time. James Williams just hits it. He did hit the hole quickly. Bostic, I guarantee you he won't throw the football. And he's down at the eight-yard line. And Appalachian State wants to call a timeout. Jerry Moore and his defensive coordinator, Ruffin McNeil, frantically signaling to call timeout, and they do with four minutes left. Now you're also in a situation here, let's play what if. Really, Georgia Southern, of course you want to stick it in the end zone, because you come away with a, you come away with the field goal here, and you force it, you don't, you forget about what the score is, you look at how many times Appalachian State is going to have to score, and that would make it a two-score ball game right now. Yeah, field goal, the, the, uh, any kind of score here really puts Appalachian State in a, in a bad situation. They need to somehow force a turnover, but at the same time, uh, you have to kind of spread yourself out maybe to do that. you got to take some risk here on defense, and, and it might open something up inside as it did for James Williams. Well, those folks don't believe it can be done, but I guarantee you that man does right there. Ruffin McNeil, the defensive coordinator, has seen his defense do a good job this afternoon. Wants one more effort out of them. They, they have done a nice job, especially this second half. Uh, after falling behind 10 points on that blocked punt and the uh, and the fumble right right at 11,000 on hand this afternoon and a hazy fall afternoon here in Boone North Carolina and I could work for the Chamber of Commerce I can't get over how pretty this this town is this is really a beautiful part of the country well we won't take any shots at Houston hit <laughs> Brewer Houston, Stadium Texas. You see the rain coming down. I'm not even going to acknowledge that. You come a long way for this game. This is a, this is a great time of the year up here. And if you've had a chance to drive around and see uh, all the ski advertisements, uh, a lot of people don't realize what great skiing that there is in the Carolinas. I've had plenty of time to drive around over the last 24 <laughs> hours. Trust me. On the misdirection, Marlo Warthen inside the 10-yard line stays in bounds, and again, App State will call a timeout. So Appalachian State, well, They're I think it was their last timeout. That's right. I'm not sure if they realized that they were down to no timeouts left. There's a third down and six will be coming up for Georgia Southern. 
to give you an idea of what it looks like around here. And, uh, that's everywhere right there. Not a hotel room to be found within, what, 75 miles of this town because this is the peak weekend that the people come out and uh, watch the leaves. I'm not from this part of the country, so I'm amazed with it. <laughs> it it's, a, it's a great tradition in this part of the country. People coming up, uh, and they turn here first, obviously, up in the mountains. So you, you got a lot of southern people coming up from uh, Georgia and, and Florida and whatnot to do uh, an annual ritual. They do this, or just to, just to look at the beautiful colors. And I had it, I enjoyed them the day as I was driving up uh, through the mountains. Part of the student body on hand for this one. They have seen their ball club play very well this afternoon, but uh, right now it looks like Georgia Southern has the upper hand as they lead at 27-21 with just under four minutes to play. Third down, six yards to go for a first down. Georgia Southern can get a first down inside the one-yard line of Appalachian State. On the quarterback draw. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. For the third time today, a Georgia Southern quarterback has scored on a quarterback draw. Well, that's one that you, you needed to be looking for. That had to be, with the timeouts, that had to definitely be number one on the hit parade the success that they've had with it. And you see everybody got kind of balled up in the middle. People's uh, caught inside and no linebackers to scrape. And he's going to get flagged for that. He was happy about it. I tell you what, Charles Bostic done a good job since coming in to replace Joe Dupree. He's had a little spark and he was a starter for two years. Joe Dupree won this job after the spring and and has done a, a decent job with this offense, but that is it's the defense and special teams that have been keeping Georgia Southern close and getting them to this point. Georgia Southern appears to be that they will go to four and one in Southern Conference play, five and two overall on the other side for Appalachian State. They will go to one and six and drop to one and three in Southern Conference play, but like you said, Appalachian State with 17 freshmen on the two deep chart. That's unreal. 17 freshmen on the two deep chart. They're going to take their lumps this year, one of the byproducts of youth. But uh, in a couple of years, if not next year, Appalachian State is going to be back to the same situation that they have grown accustomed to being. Well, you got to grow with the, with the young freshmen. Experience is the great equalizer. The Satterfield looks like a a fine looking uh, quarterback that, that, that they're going to be able to, to utilize. Uh, Chip Hooks is uh, just a junior. He's got another year. Johnny Smith's got another year. His receivers, uh, uh, he loses Ray Gamma. Don Blue is junior though, but Kevin Burton's back. He's, he's got some weapons to work with on offense and a young offensive line. So you, you, you've got to let, you got to let these guys play and get better at it. And they've acquitted themselves very well today. Appalachian State should come away with good field position after the unsportsmanlike conduct called against Charles Bostic for that little uh, Georgia two-step after the uh, North Carolina two-step after the touchdown. They call it Georgia. He's, a, he's, he's from Georgia. He's Georgia, Thomasville, Georgia. He was doing it in, in Boone, North Carolina, so they could go either way. I'm sure he'll hear about that, uh, that little dance. Of course, he hasn't had the chance to compete much this year with Joe Dupree. The signal calling. And Dupree went out midway through the third quarter with a strained right knee. It appeared to be his ankle, but they had the ice on the knee. So uh, from that point on, Charles Bostic took the reins and did a good job scoring two touchdowns for Georgia Southern. Now they squib the kick, and Coakley should have let that one go out of bounds. And now Appalachian State, we talked about the youth mistakes when it comes to youth and right there Dexter Coakley just cost his ball club 27 yards instead of starting at the 35 yard line where they would have started if he'd let the ball go they're going to start at their own eight a lot easier to do from up here isn't it yeah and it's uh, right at the end of the game here's a guy who's played all day on defense and, 
and they're making tackles and they're asking them to return kickoffs a very unusual position for a, a linebacker he's going to be a great football player here though through freshman who can who did some junior college work last year and came in here and he's they expect high things from him. Appalachian State will air it out and it's complete Chip Hooks caught the pass. He was hit immediately. I think Paul Carroll was the man who made the stop. No huddle offense as the clock runs under three and a half minutes to play in this one. Satterfield again fires it. Complete the gamma. Alton Hitson, the sophomore from Valdosta from Georgia, makes the tackle. A 20-yard pickup as Satterfield and Gamma hook up. This is their uh, two-minute offense. When they come out firing, and that's the same play that Gamma had caught, uh, would, would have been a big first down, but the ball was stripped from him. Satterfield steps up in the pocket, lets it go downfield. Gamma got behind his man and made the catch. To the 38-yard line. Boy, he got a step behind Brancis Williams, and had that ball been caught in stride, Brancis Williams, the defensive back, fell down. That would have been six, a 34-yard pickup. Look at Satterfield, though. He steps up, and, and he, he lofts the ball. This is a tremendous catch, though, by Gamma. Gamma's concentration. He's fallen down off his back foot and still able to pull the ball in. Not to mention worrying about the sideline. Just a great job. He's a good-looking receiver, Gamma. Well, we said at the top we thought they should pass more. They have passed more today, and uh, they might be able to even pass more than this. A Satterfield again on first down. He throws on the quick end, looking for Don Blue. But Darius Dawson is lucky he didn't come away with a little pass interference there. It certainly looked like he gave him a little <laughs> bit of a shove there, and uh, nobody said anything to him as the ball was in flight. Clock is stopped on the incompletion with three minutes and one second left in the ball game. 34-21. Jerry Moore's Mountaineers trail it by 13. This one complete. And down inside the 25-yard line is Nate Abraham, a junior from Charlotte, a gain of eight yards. See the clock. Appalachian State already up on the line of scrimmage. Satterfield has the first down complete to Gamma. Gamma cuts it in to the 10 yard line. Knock him down at the 11. Hey, there's no quit in this Appalachia State team. They're coming right down the field. Satterfield's been on the money. He just steps back, three step drop. He picks out Gamma, putting a great move on Sean Austin and Jamie Coleman. Almost goes. Nick Davis saved a touchdown. So Satterfield red hot on this drive. Satterfield across the middle caught by Don Blue and Blue is down at the eight yard line. I'm not sure it was Scott Davis who latched on for dear life and tore, pulled uh, Don Blue down to the carpet. You know the thing is you got 215 left here. Put it in the end zone right now. Well, and uh, maybe we're a little premature in talking about uh, the records. The 10-point cushion was uh, was just not there. Uh, here's this play. This is a play that uh, Blue almost scored on in that other series, catching it underneath. He's got to throw it high, though, because he's he's getting some pressure on the back side. That but time, again, a good job by Scott Davis not letting Don Blue pick up any more than what he already did. I'll tell you, the, the lowest percentage play in football, though, is the onside kick. And that's that's the one they're staring at coming up. And it, it is the toughest play uh, to, to to have any success with. But it, it always adds for a lot of excitement in a game. You know that the game's right at the wire with an onside kick. Is it more onside kick? I think it has to be probably more luck than skill than any other play in football as well. Yeah, there's got to be a good measure of luck in it. But uh, it's interesting to watch the different kickers, the skill they have of getting the ball to pop up or a roll or go a certain place. Satterfield, quick drop. Satterfield, touchdown Appalachian State. Okay, Satterfield has... Uh, he hasn't started the whole season. He's only started three games, but he has he's made this game exciting today. 
Georgia Southern is going to see this young man for the next few years. He's looking for the pass, yet he makes a decision. And when he makes a decision, he goes right for the end zone, just enough to get the ball over. A seven-yard touchdown run by Scott Satterfield. Now they're going to go for two. Check it. I'm sorry. They didn't give him the touchdown. We saw the officials yeah. raise their hands. They took it down to the one-yard line. That's my mistake. Heck, I, I saw marked, the ball line over. They marked it where his knee was. They marked him at the, at the one-foot line. And now a flag on this play. And the touchdown finally, sig the signal comes out, touchdown. So Satterfield making a one-yard quarterback sneak. There's some folks up here in the booth looking at each other with their palms facing up saying, what's going on? But Satterfield takes it over from one yard out. So now a new ball game, 34-27. As Kyler Ferguson in to complete the point after. Still plenty of time left, a minute 45. And Ferguson kicks it through, so a new score in Boone, North Carolina, where we have had plenty of it this afternoon. 34-28 the score. And uh, it's a good thing those guys are just doing push-ups when Appalachian State scores. If not, they would they'd be in trouble right now. But uh, you got to give credit. Well, that was a gutsy drive. Scott Satterfield leading the way. Ray Gamma with a couple of catches on that drive. It was a good drive, and I think that's uh, Jerry Moore is looking for some things from his football team. It's been inconsistent. Uh, the first five games, uh, six games of, uh, of the season, and, and now he, he comes here at home against a real fine Georgia Southern football team. And they, they you know, they gave themselves a good effort so far. They, it's been, uh, they, they've missed on a couple of things. Once again, their punting game has failed them. Uh, the block punt, the high snap, and, and the punt, and that's something they're going to have to shore up. But they've, I think they've seen a couple of their young players grow up today, especially at the quarterback position and, and their defense. Uh, it, it rose up when it had to several times, four times at least, in the second half. Tim Stowers has got to be thinking, i got to get some folks out there on that front line that have some hands, and they do exactly that. Look at that. And we got to remember, too, they had to go 92 yards after a really a, a mental mistake on the – on the kickoff receiving team. Had to go 92 yards. They did it in nine plays. Maybe those folks had left early, left a little too early. Well, overcoming adversity is a lot what this game's all about. And uh, you can point to some of those positive things in, in the film when you look at it and hopefully you can correct the mistakes you made. But one glaring weakness for App State all year long has been their punting game. Now look at this, a different twist as there was a penalty on the last, on the touchdown against Georgia Southern. Appalachian State will benefit that as the 15-yard penalty is marked off out to midfield, which is where they will kick the onside kick from. got a hook shot to the left where he's got four guys or does it have to go to the right? Alan Gwynn. And Georgia Southern's got it. So Georgia Southern will be able to run this time off. A minute 44. That was Danny Britt. Back up strong safety who was in there. Now that's what you call suicide squad there as far as having to feel those things. The hands team. That's a, you have to have some hands to be on this team. Does a pretty good job of the onside kick. Alan Gwynn gets it the, the Sunday hop here. Maybe somebody should be diving right there. The first guy, and, and I think 34, who uh, takes on a blocker, but that might be his responsibility as it's taught to him. But if he dives, that ball's across the line. Chad Gore's got a shot at that. Well, Bostic not going to take a knee. They will hand it off. Actually, they're going to just run with it. Bostic will fall down and time will run down. Now, if we have it right up here in the booth, Appalachian State cannot stop the clock. That's right. Uh, they Most teams have what they call uh, the Z-back formation and where they just stand in and huddle the, around the quarterback and uh, allow the clock to 
uh, to kind of run out, take the penalty. You can take the penalty if you want, or else you can run another play. Counting it down to 70 seconds left. Boy, this is the most disappointing thing for a defense. Played hard all day long and, and now have uh, no way to stop the clock. Very little chance of getting the football back for your offense. I want to thank Jason Dumas, who did the spotting up here in the booth tonight, and Bubba Taylor handling the statistics. Our babysitter, Joan Crawford. Great job by all. Down to 40 seconds. And it's a third down coming up. They'll only have to snap it this time. And that will do it. Last play of the ball game. Bostic will fall on it. Appalachian State cannot stop the clock but what a great effort by both of these ball clubs Georgia Southern has done what they've been doing all year long that is surviving and that's huge in football they have been getting it done when they need to get it done and Georgia Southern goes to five and two four and one in Southern Conference play on the other side the Appalachian Mountaineers go to one and six at one and three in conference play again the final score 34 28 Georgia Southern will be right back Every golfer knows the rule. Play the ball where... Kevin Eschenfelder and Jeff Van Note back here in Boone, North Carolina, where Georgia Southern has done what they've needed to do or what they've done all year long. That's nothing pretty, but just they got the job done. Good, solid, all-around performance. Once again, their, their special teams, their shine for them. I thought their offense picked it up today a little bit, uh, both uh, Joe Dupree in the first half and certainly Charles Bostic. But give Appalachia State, they didn't quit. They're down one to five. The season's not going anywhere for them. They hung in there and they played some solid football. Maybe they grew up a little bit today. All right. So a good ball game from here in Boone. We'll come back and wrap things up in just a moment. Again, the final score, Georgia Southern wins it 34 to 28. We want to remind you coming up next on Sports South, it's Tennessee Chattanooga and Virginia Military Institute. So for Jeff Van Note and all of us at Sports South, this is Kevin Eschenfelder saying so long from Boone, North Carolina. We have...